house on the rock clap your hands in this room and give God your loudest shout oh is that for God this morning clap your hands one more time stamp your feet and shout oh let's praise God and celebrate our Father and the Lord God has been good for 60 years are you ready now? Sing, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. The universe declared. The universe Your majesty. Your majesty. Hey. Who can confess it? Hey. Who can confess it? the Lord. His name is Yeshua Amashiach. Hallelujah. Yeshua Amashiach. Sing it. Lion of Judah. Agune Chemba. Yeshua Amashiach. Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Akuna Chemba, Yeshua, Amashia. Yeah. 
where feet may fail There I find And there I find you in the midst In oceans deep My faith will stand Let's sing it one more time You call me out You call me out
Almighty God, unbended hearts with all our members yielded to you this Saturday afternoon. We thank you for today, for the gift of your Son. the lavish elegance of the solitaire, the enthralling beauty of the mid-morning sun, the incomparability of the summer's rose, they all pale in comparison to your amazing glory and presence, which you dispense so lavishly upon the earth through the gift of your son Paul Adeolu Adefarasen 60 years ago you looked upon the planet with love with compassion then you fired an arrow onto our planet 60 years later he has been lightening our path, brightening our way, changing lives and releasing destinies, vanquishing foes and subduing giants, building nations and communities, a voice of reformation, a crusader, a revivalist, a man of God, a goodly and a godly man. On this day, supernatural Jesus, we thank you. We, your people, are gathered here today to say we are thankful for the gift of your Son. Saints of the living God, if you are grateful, if you are happy, if you are thankful to God that He released grace. He deployed a human angel and brought to our world to execute this divine mandate. Let your hands celebrate. Let your heart rejoice. Let your voice shout a big hallelujah, a big praise the Lord to the God of all grace, to the God of all comfort. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, today is an incredible day because our champion, our patriarch, officially becomes a sexagenarian today. Listen, look at Jesus Christ before he came. The coming of Jesus was heaven's response to the cries and the tears of people. Same with Moses. And then our world was thrown into chaos and but God had good news for Nigeria. God had good news for Africa. So, before the stars took their place in the sky, God knew. Before the sun, 93 million miles away, was shining upon mankind. Before the moon was blazing against the blackness of the night and the wind was howling upon the earth, God had orchestrated that 60 years ago, 
there will come a little boy. And when I think of this, I think of a young man in mythic times. You may know this little boy. It, is, it was said concerning him in the land of myth, in the time of magic, the destiny of a kingdom rests on the shoulders of a young boy. And his name is... Sixty years later, child of God, ladies and gentlemen, we have been changed. From many of us here, our testimonies, if we'll begin to share our testimonies, we will be here till Kokoroko. But if you are grateful to God for the gift of Pastor Paul, come on now. Come on now. I don't like the way you are shouting. I thought... I thought you would shout like you want to lose your mind. Come on. Like you can't, you don't have sense. Because he sent us a deliverer. One who built us a brand we don't need to polish. House on the rock. One who have been defending the nation. Nigeria speaking truth to power. Defending the name of Jesus. Making Jesus popular all over the world. Happy birthday, Papa. Happy birthday, Papa. Keep celebrating our Father. Just keep shouting like you are out of your mind. <laughs> Morning, everyone. You may be seated for a brief moment. I go and appreciate Pastor Abel Loco. When he came to House and Rock, it wasn't like that. He used to be one of those pastors that used to shout out, God, God like, don't shout at me, my friend. You know? And then just one year or two with Pastor Paul, see him praying now, he's like, Dear God, <laughs> Master of the Universe. Yeah. So sweet. Please put your hands together for him. I appreciate him. Very nice. Welcome to this beautiful afternoon, this t afternoon tea with Pastor Paul Adey Farrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what? Only Pastor Paul can invite you in hot Nigeria to afternoon tea. You know... There's nobody else that we would have answered if Pastor Goge tried it. It better be a Zobo Shindig. Like, <laughs> afternoon tea. Pastor Paul, you're just, you're just class personified. You know? We don't have many heroes in Nigeria, and this is the truth. When we sing the national anthem, you know, our heroes pass, we struggle to picture people. Because we, it's the truth, it's the truth. We don't have too many that we know. And because we didn't get taught history in school, we don't have too many people that we look at. But Pastor Paul, you are a living hero. You are... No, for real, for real. For real, we're going to take testimonies today because I know there are many testimonies that you haven't heard from people's personal lives about how your influence has changed them. I was a ter terrible child. Terrible growing up. And... I remember uh, looking forward to university because I had uh, conquered um, all the female species in my immediate um, surroundings at the time. So I was looking to the great outdoors and the great beyond of university. And I thought when I get to university, this Lagos will know my name. I will show them the proverbial shege. Yeah? And I got to university and determined to be a notorious individual, determined to be a terrible person. And I got there, and unfortunately for me, or fortunately for me, I came across another expression from Pastor Paul, the Rock Foundation, where <laughs> the Rock Foundation mission, where um, Pastor Paul has set people to reach out to individuals like me who were uh, sent of other people into the world to do damage. And eventually I came into church and you know just I remember my first time in House on the Rock walking into House on the Rock in 1996 everything spoke excellence and you have to picture where I was coming from you know churches where you sweat churches where you don't really express any energy a young boy with a lot of energy walking into church and the music they were having a holy communion service we used to go out these small cups then with you know the 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 wine or the juice in you know <laughs> in it and the beat from the speaker was causing ripples in my cup. I said, this is my church. <laughs> Any church that can create Bedou like this, I'm worshiping there forever. You know, but of all the things I could thank God for, there are many, many things I could thank God for in terms of um, how House Rock has changed my life. I remember in the course of my university, 
um, I was pastoring. I know, hard to believe. I was pastoring. Um, eventually, that's how much the ministry got a hold of me. I was pastoring in Unilag, and there was a need to go plant a, a fellowship in Lasso. And I hated the idea if I'm going to be, you know, uh, vulnerable and honest with you here. Because Lasso is not really inside Lagos. Lasso is, you know, and that, I, like on the road to Lasso, you see the big five, you know, like all the lions and all the animals of the wild. And, you know, just getting there was a chore. You know, I, I wasn't looking forward to it. But somehow I got to Lasso, did the work, and in the midst of it, someone said, there's a young lady I want you to meet, you know. Are you about to speak in tongues, sir? I understand. Um, and, you know, I finished preaching for the day, and they brought this young lady who didn't come to service at the time. And I saw her and I was like, ah, God is still making this kind. I said, God, try. You know, but the people that are fearfully and the people that are wonderfully made. You know, she was wonderfully made. And I just thought, ah, I could, I could be her friend, you know. Uh, fast track, we've been married this year, October, 15 years now. Uh, so while I was doing your work, sir, God told me, I do not muscle the ox that treads out the corn. He said, yes, my son, behold, babe, toast. <laughs> and so now I'm happily married. Thank you very much, sir. And there are many people like me. And I just want to take a show of um, hands. If you've been in House on the Rock for up to 10 years, wave my hand. Too, too, too little? Okay, if you've been here 20 years, 20 years, put your hands up. Come on, let, in fact, stand up. If you've been here up to 20 years, let me see you standing. <laughs> it's not for lack of where to go. It's just that when we get there, we won't find you there. So we have to stay. Yeah? And then if you found a spouse in House on the Rock, stand, ah, the wish is jumping. <laughs> you found a good one. If you found a spouse, stand. If you found a spouse here in House on the Rock, a few of you, I see you. Don't worry, the rest of you will do point and kill before the evening is over. Pick what you like. All right, now everybody here, I want you to stand, apart from Pastor Paul, everyone else, please join me. Stand. And I want you from the bottom of your heart to appreciate the man of God that God has set over us. <laughs> Pastor Paul, we've looked at you over the years and we like what we see. We respect who we see. You're a man who is not just a man who is spiritual, but you've set standards for us here physically that we are happy to aspire to and to keep on striving to. And we see you walking your talk. And for us, that is important. We see you living up to the things you tell us to do. When you tell us to give, you give as well. When you tell us not to do things, we don't see you doing them behind the scenes. We appreciate you. You're a real man of God. And then apart from being a man of God, you're a man that we like. We like you, Pastor Paul. We like you. We don't just love you because we have to. We don't just respect you because you're the man over this house. We like you. We like you, Pastor Paul. You're a good man of God. And now that you've gone into the halfway, the first 60, at, look, the next 60, we assure you, you will not stress the way you have stressed in the first 60. We look forward to, Pastor Paul, 80 years old, you're going to be preaching with swag. On this same pulpit, unless we grow and build a bigger church, you're going to be preaching with swag. 80, 90, you're going to be strong, Pastor Paul. You're going to live long. Wait till you see what we do at your birthday at 120. We're throwing down. We're throwing down. We're blocking that Lucky like, like Expressway. We're not playing games. I give your pastor a big God bless you. Let him know that you love him. All right. <laughs> You may take up your seats. You may take up your seats. We're going to welcome a few testimonies from you. So if you have a phenomenal testimony about how your life changed from interaction with House on the Rock and with Pastor Paul, just make your way to the side over there. One of the pastors uh, will see you and speak to you about it and will make room for you in the service, all right? If you have a phenomenal testimony um, and you want to share it with us, we would love to hear from you. So just make your way to the side. And if we don't get to do it today, we'll take note of it. And at some point over the next few Sundays, we will read your testimony out in church. But uh, we want to show you more of who our trailblazer pastor father is um, and all the things he has done. You know, Pastor Paul is a template. He's no longer, you know how the president is not a person, he's an institution. Pastor Paul isn't just a pastor anymore. He's a template for other pastors. He's your pastor's pastor. Do you understand? Your favorite pastor, anybody out there that you like, they're learning here. 
right? And whether they admit it or not, they come here to learn how to do an experience. They come here to learn how to pattern a church, how to start church in the home, right? And you are a template. And we don't take that for granted anymore. But once upon a time, we just thought it was something you were gifted to do. We realize it's also part of your calling. You are a template, not just for the body of Christ, but for Nigeria. Please turn your attention to the multimedia screens. The 90s saw the professional class swept into ministry. Doctors, lawyers, bankers, and engineers were called to ministry, bringing along many professionals. We were free from the stringent dress codes and legalism, but some things were not to change, at least not until Pastor Paul came on the scene. I remember the very first day I walked into Muson Center and I said, somebody pinch me, they must be playing a CD here. It was excellent music. It had become mainstream in House on the Rock. And for, for people who were just experiencing what you call the Pentecost, you know, the Spirit of God, the liberty in worship, it was the most liberating thing. Just seeing, being able to lift your hand. You're free to shout when the pastor is preaching, yes! Pastor Paul made the Bible come alive. So Pastor Paul, from that early in ministry in Nigeria, had the grace to impact not only upon his listeners but also affect the church at large. He was able to disrupt the monotony. The House on the Rock was the very first ministry that gave some form of remuneration to music ministers. We didn't know back then that what Pastor Paul was doing was creating industry for these music ministers to a place where international artists, you know, award-winning artists are calling on Nigerian music ministers for collaborations. Pastor Paul was an influencer long before social media influencers became a thing. The delivery of his messages, his deep sense of understanding of the Bible, his eloquence and passion in preaching, his vocabulary in prayer, his discipline to give up his Saturdays to prepare for service, his unmistakable sense of style, his recognition of potential in others, his love for music and musicians, and a dogged faith that if God said it, then it is done. All left an indelible mark on Christianity as we practiced it. It was from him we learned how to not tie, to put a small fold on top, to use your type, you know, typing and all of those things. Um, Prior to that, I mean, we wore what we used to call coats. It was Pastor Paul, we learned uh, suits, uh, fittings, and all of those things. The audacity of Pastor Paul's faith took the church where many feared to thread, making it one of the first Pentecostal churches of its size to move to the island, paving the way for others to follow and also to situate the Rock Cathedral. The abstract has literally become concrete. It's the largest fully air-conditioned, purpose-built church auditorium in West Africa and one of the top two or three maximum in all of Africa. And this is the new home of House on the Rock. There was no template for the Rock Cathedral in and around Lagos. It came from the faith of a man who, who had seen what no one had seen. Despite the fact that I'm in the corporate world, you know, if I walk into the boardroom of uh, House on the Rock, I'm inspired. You know, how many corporate organizations can put together such boardroom, talk less of even the uh, church itself and how things are put in place. Not one to discountenance the potential of anyone, Pastor Paul launched an outreach to the often feared and misunderstood inner city youth, popularly called Area Boys. The relationship for almost two decades now forms part of the security infrastructure for the largest gospel music concert on the globe, The Experience. When you look at the scale at which we do things like food and drink today and we do fashion, your boldness and your vision to do the experience greatly inspired me as to how doing things at scale were very possible. I remember speaking at an event and coming down at the elevator, I met someone, one of the guests, and talking, I was like, oh, what church do you attend? And I was like, house on the rock. And he was like, no wonder. 
and I felt very proud because Pastor Paul has, he has left a trademark that House on the Rock equals excellence. 17 years on, the experience is now the standard for organizing large events and the established program format for such gatherings. It has opened the door for many local gifts to a global audience. The platform of the experience has played such a huge role in showcasing the talents from this part of the world. I'm having to go to a place like Orlando as the only African to be part of the uh, music conference that has um, uh, Rita Campbell, Travis Green, Tasha Cobb. How? Because someone like Pastor Paul, you know, has been intentional, has been deliberate to mentor first and then to, to create the platform, you know, the platform of the experience and of tape. And today it, it's become a global altar. When House on the Rock started, many didn't think it stood a chance. It was called a flash in the pan, a church for the youths. Even if it did survive, no one expected much from it. But they were wrong. For whatever God does is forever. Almost three decades after, the church under Pastor Paul's leadership has continued to grow, break new grounds, and push new frontiers. And today, we celebrate the gift and the giver of the gift with whom nothing shall be impossible. Oh, that doesn't sound like celebration. That doesn't sound like a grateful people. That sounds like maybe 10 or 20 people that are ready to give God praise. Come on, keep appreciating God. Let him know that you are grateful for the influence, the impact that his son has brought in your life. When God wants to bless you, he brings you somebody. And he brought us his best one. I think it's time to give God some proper, proper praise. This is a praise party. So uh, if your high heels are disturbing you, cast them away from thee. If your shoes are too tight, take them off. Whatever is going to be an encumbrance right now, I want you to get rid of it because we're about to get down in praise and give God praise. And I know just a man who knows how to bring a hallelujah always. I know a man who's ready to call God Igwe, who's ready to tell God that he's ready to praise. If you want to praise God in our local parlance, in our local way, in some Fuji gospel, please get up on your feet as you make welcome Mike Abdul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Pastor Paul at the Pharisee, the gospel of Jesus Christ looks good on you, sir. The praise of God who you promote vehemently looks good on you. And of course, 60 looks good on you. God bless Pastor Paul. You're an amazing man. Men lead leaders. And you have made yourself an amazing leader of men. Thank you very much for being a father, even to the fatherless. You've been a father to your children. You give them awesome platform. You also give platform to those that you don't even know. Thank you very much, Pastor Paul. You are fantastic. Celebrate the grace of God. Hallelujah. 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 That is why I'm dancing now, you see. Hallelujah, Gonita Lendo, me say. Hallelujah, oh God, me fuba, me say. Hallelujah, hey, Allah, yeah, he won't be your body. Hallelujah, oh God, oh yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh God, me fuba, me say. Hallelujah, hey, Allah, yeah, he won't be your body. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, tell me who are you for? I am for Jesus. Who are you for? I am for Jesus. Invisible counsel. Invisible counsel. Miracle walker. Oh, oh. I am for Jesus. Invisible counsel. Invisible counsel. Miracle walker. Hey. I am for Jesus. Oh, yeah, and 
vivo, é vivo, Jesus, 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 Oya Moranunga, everybody. Give hey. rain for the lima sa. Mobaleta for oh oh oh. Morisiya. Moroke modele ye. Atura mi ba. Oti do mo para mo baba mi mo. Ajinde ay. What you gonna do? Say. What you gonna do? Yo. Yeah. Oh. Life is beautiful. It's okay, dance with us. I am in day, yeah. No more trouble. I no go bad. Jesus. Glory day. Glory day. Glory day. Glory day. Jesus. Oh. I look at your day. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I don't care your day, I'm calling it, I'm calling it. I'm calling the redemption, I'm calling the connection. I'm calling it. 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 I'm Hey, press down, shaking together, running over. Hey, oh, 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 Help me say I'm me, oh. I'm me, yo, yo, yo. 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 I'm me, yo, it will be well with your business. It will be well when you go out. It will be well when you come in. Whatever you lay your hands upon will prosper. In the name of Jesus. Wherever the soles of your feet shall tread up for you possess in the name of Jesus. I still be well on it too, sir. I still be well on it too, yeah. I still be well on it too, sir. I still be well on it too, yeah. Somebody make some noise. Are you ready to celebrate? Is it good? Are you ready? Oh my God. Thank you for today. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Oh, back at the back of the tea. Can I hear you? As you are too, oh, go, go. Oh, yeah, see my life, oh. See my life, oh. Come on. Lord, I'm grateful. My testimony. By your grace, oh. Open in the jacket, oh, 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 Everybody say, Oh, everybody say, Oh, yeah, 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 everybody say, Oh,
It's okay to give God praise. Even God says you're supposed to honor your parents. So come on. He expects that you honor your man of God as well. Give God praise for bringing you the very best of the very best. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I want to bring another grateful individual forward to just uh, speak for a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome one of Lagos' finest comedians forever. If you love our father in the house, I want you to shout happy birthday. No, no, that is for 40 years. 
If you know... Uh, that is because I'm not too tall, so I'm adding to my height. That's, <laughs> That's 40th birthday shout. If you know you are grateful that our pastor, our father, our papa is 60 years looking healthy, not just looking healthy, very healthy, doing God's work, I want you to scream, Happy birthday! You know, every time I come here, most times it's to do comedy, but um, Saturday is very different. Um, I was a student in Enugu, and then I walked into House on the Rock, and I was like, ah, this church is different from the other churches here. They even gave first time as food. So, ah, the choir was different. I was like, who is the founder of this church? They say it's in Lagos. I say, where is he? I said, I must see him. Another very first time I saw Pastor Paul was on a video that he recorded for the Millennium Temple. Those of you who repented the last 10 years, you don't know what that video is. <laughs> As I saw that video, I said, yes, that is my pastor. So when I came to Lagos in 2012, July 26th, I said, House on the Rock is fast. And where I saw House was at Lagos border, Ikorodu. Then as the was at Muson Center, ah, I joined one church. The pastor preached. Ah, I said, no. Even me, when I was campus assistant pastor, I was doing better than that. So I can't. I said, I cannot come to Lagos and be, I'll be feeding who's supposed to feed me. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to see Pastor Paul. So I said, let me try one Sunday. That's how I entered bus from a Greek, 7 a.m. I got to Muson, third service. Ah, but I made up my mind that no matter how far it, the journey was, the distance, I must come to Moose on every Sunday. And I told God, I said, God, I want to be going to church early, so be moving my address closer to church. <laughs> That's how God answered, move my address from Ikorodu to Bariga. But then, so I saw the gospel, I said, hey. And it was a miracle, but the environment, I always, when people say, where do you live? I say, Akoka, because I didn't like that I was in Bariga. My friend said, you live in Bariga? I said, I cannot live in Bariga. Bariga is around me. It's, I'm not there. And in this house, every Sunday, Pastor Bob would speak the word of God to us. There was one Sunday I was going through stuff. I was just sitting, I always sit at that gallery because, I, because I'm not very tall, so I like to sit at that place so that I can look at you directly. And Pastor Bob was preaching about Peter walking on water. And he made a prophetic statement, said, God will never allow you to sink. It was as if that word came to me directly, and I held it. From that day to this very moment, every time I'm going through stuff, and you know there are those times where you are so overwhelmed, you cannot even pray. I say, God, remember what Pastor Paul said. He said, you will not allow me to sink. <laughs> and every single time, I never sink. And I'm going to look at Pastor Paul. See, we don't, I personally feel that they should have given 25th January Republic holiday for you, sir. <laughs> no, because if you check it well, the impact Pastor Paul has, sorry, I'm, I, I should, I, I'm sorry, sir. The impact my father has over this country should be, should be a national holiday. <laughs> it's the truth. So I went somewhere, and the one pastor, I won't mention his name, he was angry with you. I said, why are you angry with Pastor Paul? He said, how can Pastor Paul organize the experience and does not take offerings? I'm <laughs> quoting him, sir. No, I'm quoting him. And he said that Pastor Paul is, is depriving people from the opportunity to sow into the experience. So he said by himself, he came to church office after this. He's not a member of this church, though, and dropped his seed. And I told him, I said, my father does not do what God has not told him to do. I believe, you know, when Pastor started the communion, when he was teaching about communion, you know, every communion, said, Pastor will now read testimonies from the previous communion. All the testimonies are always new. There was a particular communion service. Pastor repeated a previous testimony. Ah, I was sitting there. I was not like, ah, God not do anything new this month. <laughs> so when Pastor was done reading it, he now 
prayed. Because the testimony was about somebody that had, was a lady that had a form of discomfort on her chest for years. And Pastor Hope prophesied that somebody is going through that same thing and the person receives a healing. Instantly, a lady sitting around that place came out. And I said, oh, now I understand why Pastor Paul read an old testimony to enable him to prophesy to that person to receive a healing. <laughs> so I want to say thank you very much for, for the words you've spoken to us. Recently, Pastor Paul made a statement. He said, for you to know God. No, I, I don't want to make a mistake. I wrote it on my phone. <laughs> yeah. It's on this. He said, for you to know God. No, 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 no. No, no, ma, you know, this phone is where, you know, iPhone, the battery can die quick, so. <laughs> so. Uh -huh. Everything Pastor Paul says, I write it down. He said, for, to know God correctly, you have to know God continually. <laughs> and when Pastor Paul said that, you know, sir, thank you for correctly preaching the message of grace. Because. As much as I'm a young guy, I'm angry with the way these new pastors are preaching. Because I've been in campus fellowship pastor, I know what the, most of them are doing. They are manipulating people. Giving people life, so that they want their church to be f filled up. They just say, uh, grace is this, grace is that. But if you listen to Pastor Paul very well, he has correctly preached the message of grace to, for us to know that it's not a license to sin. You know, somebody of his status and the people around him, most times he might be under pressure to, to compromise his stand. But he, even though Pastor Paul does not, Pastor Paul fears no one. He, he doesn't fear anyone. And so we thank you very much for staying true. I'm grateful that I'm a son of this house. And I'm a, I was encouraged with that video. When we were showing the video, they now showed Felandro to you when he was young. No, you know what I'm encouraged? When they showed that particular clip, the voiceover at that point said, they said House on the Rock was the church of the youth. And now that was the youth of House on the Rock then. And now we are the new youth. Sir. We'll make you proud, sir. Dad, we are going to make you proud. Happy birthday. Thank you for this platform. We all know you, sir. Thank you very much. If you love possible, one more time. Come on, make some noise. Happy birthday, sir. We're going to welcome some testimonies. Come on, put your hands together and bless God for what he is doing here in our lives. We're going to welcome some testimonies and we're going to start with one of our regional pastors. Please make welcome Pastor Barnabas Erastus. Hallelujah. Somebody make some noise. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Dad. You are the greatest that in the whole world. My partner, Pastor Paul, had crossed 25, over 25 years ago. And I remember us sitting in Vigis in his house, the dining table around square. And my wife and his wife seated somewhere. And through General Williams Obene, Rear Admiral Umbu, I got a tape. I listened to that tape over 100 times. When I met at the very Believer's Bible Conference, I told you, you said that you should give me another 100 tapes. My life, my destiny never remained the same. And you asked me in that conference, what are the challenges with the church? I said, public address system. You told Pastor Yemi, give him 100 or 200,000 to upgrade his uh, P, uh, public address system. Um, we had a first crusade in Jaji. You came 24 years ago. We fasted for 40 days. There's a curse on the land, Jaji. So don't I live there? Red Mera uh, Bolaji is here. And you came. We had 4,000, over 4,000 people. 247 people gave their life to Christ. <laughs> Jaji has never remained the same. You can't write the history of Nigerian army without talking about Jaji. Bolaji, Red Mera Bolaji here. If they post you to Jaji those days, is the punishment ground. So the wealth in that place right now. After training 6,000 soldiers in Depot, they will have to bring them to judge you, train them for counterterrorism, and then send them to the Northeast. 
the, the, the GIG has become an institution. And thank you. In all of that process to try to start House on the Rock, I remember I resumed seven days after Rengoki. 2007, Goki came in seven days later. My father is a soldier, um, a copra, um, firstborn of 12 children. And if you ever think you, you, you've tested poverty, you're at a different level. Because 12 of us in two rooms, all sleeping on the floor, not on a mattress, on a mat. My path crossed with Pastor Paul. Every family member of mine is born again. Every family, in the capacity, pastors in their capacity. My brother next to me will be Lieutenant Colonel in the Nigerian Army. My sister died some few years ago. She's three star in civil defense. The fourth born is now four square Sokoro resident pastor. The tenth born is a pilot. We have a medical doctor. You can't believe that that came out of Barak. <laughs> House on the Rock, I don't know, will be 23 years. We came and prayers was going on. We used to come here to pray. But the pastors I used to pray with Ram, Pastor, if, I, if there's any pastors in House on the Rock that prayed with Ram, where are they one? Um, it was sun here behind the backyard. What we do is that you wear your suit and your tie. When you come to Pastor Paul's house in Vigis, you remove your tie, your suit, and you leave your inner vest. So you pray for two hours under the sun, then you come and wait to dry up, and then you dress up again. And sometimes Pastor Paul will say, okay, come in, guys. And there are another two, three hours of teaching and impartation. The rest is history. I think in all of my set, I'm the only one. Everybody is gone. I'm the only one standing in my set. When we're about to hit House on the Rock, I've done all my survey, it was going to be crusading in Kaduna, Amadou, Belo City. We've had one in Jaji, and Pastor Paul said to me, if you could gather over 4,000 people in a village setting, can, can you imagine what's going to happen if you come into KD? Can you start something we can support? I said, no. If I'm going to start anything, it'll be House on the Rock. God has never asked me to start a church. And he said, go and pray about it. After praying for at least over one year, there was a crisis in Kaduna in 2000. Over 3,000 people were killed. That, that was what truncates that crusade. Um... But we took off, and within that period, I lost my first son. He was pushed into a well. Um, to me, that was, um, that was the greatest darkness moment in my life. Um, people thought I lost my mind, because when they pulled the boy out of the well, I held my son for another 12 hours. I was praying. Pastor Paul had to fly in, two pastors, Pastor, Pastor Uche is here, and one other Pastor Francis, they came from Lagos. You know, by the time they came the following, the people had actually gathered around. The boy was bleeding through his nose. The doctors have looked at him. There were brain particles. And the doctor said, if this boy ever come back to life, you have a mental problem. And my wife said, Pastor, please just let this baby go. It was the darkest moment of my life. And I remember I went to Nightel. There was no mobile phone. Everybody was saying everything they needed to say. And I spoke with Pastor Paul. And he said to me, Ban, I don't have your anointing. My both children are alive. But I, I, I'm going to relate you to somebody who is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. You know what you just experienced? It was the exact thing God experienced when Jesus hung on the cross and died for our sins. I needed to hear that. And it kept me going. You know, today I have six children. One adopted seven. There are a set of twins. A boy and a girl, they're 15. One is, um, Jesus is in the Nigerian Navy Military School, in SS2. Um, Mary is in SS2, they're 15 year old. The rest is history. Not only that, from Kaduna. Out of Kaduna, there's a church in Kano. Saying, okay, please do stand. There's a church in Zamfara, Pastor Fred Zamani. Do stand. There's a church in Mina. Um, Peter Rock, please do stand. There's a church in Oshogo. All came out of Kano, out, out of Kaduna. Um, the rest is history. Pastor, Pastor Peter Rock and Pastor Fred were students when I picked them, and I actually put deliberately campus pastors and I put them on salary. Deliberately. If you look back, because 
what you taught us. The rest is history. Thank you. You are the greatest daddy in the whole world. If you want to shout, please do stand, clap your hands and shout! Thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you represent. I celebrate your uniqueness. I said to you, I'm indebted to you for life. Anybody can come and go. I'm stuck. I'm stuck here. Um, thank you. And all I pray that the next 60 years will be more gracious. God will be more gracious to you in the next 60 years than what you saw in the last 60 years. May God do much, much, much more in you, for you, through you, and by you. And I pray that your children, your, your children, both of you, mama, your children will exceed all of you. Every child has a dream to exceed his both parents. It's my prayer for what you do for the kingdom to advance his cause, that your children will exceed both of you in your lifetime. I got that, I got that prayer point. Um, it was one of Pastor Paul's birthday. Pastor Fai was, I can't remember, Pastor Paul was 42. 40, 40, 40 second birthday and his mother was praying for him and when she made pronouncement and she said it will all happen in my lifetime so I pray for you that in your lifetime your children will exceed both of you in knowledge in power in wisdom in wealth in riches in power in achievement in success and in service to God and to mankind I'm one of those lives that you have touched and then the many lives thank you I appreciate it. Go on, appreciate Regional Director of the House on the Rock Churches in the Northwest part of Nigeria, Pastor Barnabas Erastus. Join us and acknowledge the presence of some visiting ministers, Bishop Oscar and Pastor Mrs. Ugochi Osai. Please put your hands together for them. Presiding Bishop over City of Refuge in Lagos. Also acknowledge Apostle Christian Phillips, Senior Pastor, Clay Temple Ministries, Lagos. We would also like to acknowledge Pastor Tosin Martins, Pastor of the Franchise Church, Lagos. We're going to welcome a few more testimonies. And if your testimony was one of those screen, please come back to the testimony wall. Um, while we invite... Sister Winnie to give her a quick testimony. Happy birthday, Pastor Poor. Happy birthday, Pastor Eva. It's supposed to be your birthday as well. Um, the woman who came here to testify some time ago about how God saved my little boy. I was meant to travel and the trip got canceled somehow. And he had, I don't know who remembers the testimony here. And God delivered my son from dying after bleeding profusely from all parts. Pastor Poor. Pastor Ifai, I just want to say thank you because in 2018, in 2018, I lost everything, everything. I lost my marriage, the, the car I was using at the time, he took it up, put it on, for sale, on sale, I was using the tricycle, and I lost everything. I was humiliated, everything, and I made up my mind, I said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to a new city, I don't know how it's going to happen but I'm gonna start my life all over again from nothing. And it took audacity and courage to make that move at the time. And I had three kids, I had to leave the, the most prized possession of my life because I didn't know where I was going. But like, okay, let me just go test the water, see what Lagos has in stock and then, and I came. I remember I had to sleep on the floor. It was nothing. Coming from where you have your own house, your landed property, and everything, starting afresh. And my kids came, God did it for me, it was a long journey. And I'm thankful for the, the gift of my children because we would trek from, we would trek, shat trek, Sunday after Sunday we would trek, sometimes we'll be sweating, you know, but there was this zeal to serve God. For those boys, my first one is 13, the second is 11, and the last is eight. And they love you so much, Pastor Paul, so you are, like an, you are an inspiration to them. Who we'll come to church. And sometimes morning, by the time I wake up, they buy on their they're like, Mom, let's go to church. So when I'm even tired and overwhelmed of like I'm tired, they gave me hope. And I came, I said, serving, coming to church every Sunday. And the word you preach here has so much power 
to raise people who are hopeless, who think that there's nothing, nothing. Like, what are you living for? But every time I come to church and I listen to you, I'm, there's just something I can't even explain that tells me, Winnie, you will make it. You will make it. And Pastor Paul, everything I lost, I have. Is it the car God gave me? I have an SUV that I'm managing. I know I'll get better. I have a house. I stay in a house where I don't pay a dime in Victoria Island. My children are in school. I pay the school fees. God has been so, so good. So, so good. So, so good. Every platform I left my radio presenting job, I came here. I got gigs to MC events. I got platforms back. Oh, thanks to you, Pastor Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the gift of hope and courage. And to know that I'm raising boys who adore you. And every time they, they tell me, Mom, we want to be like Pastor Paul. And I'm grateful that I'm on the right path. I didn't have to sell my body. I don't have to sell. I don't have to keep myself to feed and take care of three sons. Thank you, Pastor Rifai. And thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you. A happy birthday. Next, we're going to welcome. Go on, go on, appreciate God. We're going to take a few more testimonies. Don't forget, if your testimony was screen, make your way to the testimony wall, which is just below the screen on this side. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Um, I want to say, when my dad died 20 years ago, you were ordained my father, but I, I, it took me several years to meet you. And I'm going to say this because, um, long story short, we have been suffering, my family and I, for over 20 years since we lost our dad. And when I moved to Lagos in 2021, I was the most depressed, I was suicidal, and I thought I was going to kill myself at some point. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Um, but I told myself that in 2021, I'm going to make church my priority. And I joined um, the service team. Initially, I was in ushering, but then I moved to media department. Every time I'm in church, people don't really understand what goes on. I cry even while I'm at work. And when I hear you preach, I just, I just know that this is my place. And then one night, I was really depressed, and I thought, this is the night I'm going to finally give up and die. And I made one prayer, and I asked God that if he really cares about me, he should show me the way out. And that night, I saw you in my dreams. You were leading my way, and though the road was so muddy, and I couldn't find my way, but you kept saying, come, come, I'm directing you, keep coming. And I kept following you, and then I found myself in church. And that was there, I knew that no matter what happens, I always have to be here. I came into Lagos earning 30,000 euros as my salary, and I have a family that depends on me. My younger sister had brain damage, and there was a lot of things that needed to be fixed, but there was no money. Like, the entire family, I don't think we end up 100,000 in the whole family putting together. But la sometime last year, you were preaching, and then you said, um, by faith, give your salary, give everything that you have in your account. I came here and I emptied my account. I just placed everything. I told God, if you don't do it this year, I don't know when you do it. Long story short, Pastor Paul, what I ain't now, I never in my entire life thought that in 2022, I would get jobs in the UK, jobs in the US, and today, my elder sister got admission in the UK. She's doing better now. She's got, she just got a job. She's going to start by Monday. And everything, gradually, gradually, everything is turning out well. I just want to say thank you, Pastor. Thank you, God, for bringing me here. I've been a member of House on the Rock since Port Harcourt. If Pastor Larry is here, I just want to say thank you, Pastor Larry. Your words always encourage me. And I knew you got all that gift from Pastor Paul. So I just want to say thank you to the entire Pastor Paul, Pastor Paul and the entire House on the Rock Church. I am really, really grateful. I'm forever indebted to you, sir. Go on, when you clap, you're not clapping so for Pastor Paul, you're praising God for what God has done. Next, I'd like us to welcome another testimony. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Church. 
and happy birthday, Pastor Paul. I want to say I am grateful for the gift of Pastor Paul, my papa. Walking in here, I came and I came to the island without anything. I'm an educationist, by the grace of God. Where I started in Ogun State, it was all around war. But God asked me to leave and go to the island. I left and I came to the island. Someone directed me here. The first day I ever heard of House on the Rock. I know experience, but I never knew it was run by House on the Rock. The first day I came, excellent. Everything was fantastic, the word of God. That word has kept me going. And today, God has blessed me with a school in this very island. I sold my house. I ran out of my house. God asked me to leave. And I left with my children. Said they will kill all your children. And we came here. The word has blessed me. I encounter you in my, when I was going through a, a turbulent time. And you show up by the word. You say, come out of the mess. And in fact, every message in my life, God trashed them out. We are blessed in this house. Today, God has blessed me with a school. God has blessed me. I didn't struggle for it. He just came looking for me. God has blessed me with two graduates in this house. I am grateful to Pastor Paul. I am grateful to Pastor Ifai. Thank you so much. God bless you. Next, I'd like to welcome a regional director of the House of Work Churches in the Northeast, Pastor Yusuf Akila. Good afternoon. Well, <laughs> happy birthday, Pastor Paul. Everybody had different ways how they got into House on the Rock. So came in their Gucci suits, drove up in their limos, but we were brought in here on ambulances. We came in an ambulance. My past and Pastor Paul crossed 29 years ago, and a few years later, I had an incident that was going to change my life forever. I lost two of my biological children in the space of five days. And one died on a Monday, and one died a Saturday. And I was guest at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Central Parish Abuja, the next day, July the 12th. And um, so I asked them to move the cops to the mortuary. So I was preaching Sunday morning with the cops of my child to be buried the next day. And I was at the Muson Center for the wedding of Jimmy Bent. And um, now I was in the house and I was in different ministry about the time. And I was at the foyer. I was talking with uh, Rear Admiral uh, Bolaji, Akiyemi, uh, Bolaji. Yeah, then he was lifting, they were sub-lifting and then. And I was telling him that I would love to meet Pastor Paul. And you were standing there talking with some few persons because they had to move people out to reset for the reception. And then, I, I would know for whatever reason, you turned towards the left and our eyes met. And then you opened your arms. I felt like filled because of the state I was. And you gave me the hawk that was going to change my life for it was the hawk. And I felt like something was washing me from the inside. The next day was Sunday and um, we came to church and with my wife and um, you asked me to come to the house the next day Monday 
And then when I got to the house, uh, the PA there, you said you should take me to the office and give me 50 tapes. So I took those 50 tapes and then I went to listen to them. Then you came to Abuja uh, for the inauguration of the refuge. And then the, um, you said to me that I should get back to the ministry. And I said to you, I said, I can't. And I said, I don't want to preach. And as much as I tried to explain to you how I felt, when I finished saying whatever I say, you look back at me and say, I can see the fire in you. And I'm like, maybe you didn't hear me. Then you said to me, which is one of the things that really defines everything. You said, get to Kaduna, start the church. I will support you. And I said, I can't. But you made sure every time there was a meeting at the media conference, the Believers Bible Conference, I always traveled to come and be part of it. And you always gave me audience to find out what I was doing. Because I was bleeding on the inside. And um, one of the things I would never forget, you said, one day, one day, God is going to take your pain and put his anointing on it and to become a powerful message. Hallelujah. Thank you. Fast forward. God has blessed me with three more children after the ones that died. And then I think it was a dinner or so at the refuge and you just looked over the, the table and said to me, Pastor Yusuf, whatever you do, I don't want you to get rusty. You're feeling the pain now, but you're going to get over it. I do not want, when you get over it, you get too rusty to do what God has asked you to do. And then another time you said, why don't you go to Joss? Have you been to Joss? I said, I've never been to Joss. He said, go and pray about it and come back, let us know what it is. So I came back in August 2000. I said, I feel led to go. Today, we own three acres of our own property. In the most expensive part of the city, when we had our conference last year, it's become an outdoor event, we had over 15,000. And when I look at the journey through the years, and I look at the spaces with the permission of your grace to have exposed me to the places I stand today, I cannot but say, you were sent to me. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder what my life would be. Let me say, why are you different? Some said it was my fault the children died. You are the only person who always told me, get back to the ministry. Thank you for saying the things you said. When I look at how my ministry and life is impacting lives around the world, I say all because someone saw what nobody saw. Happy birthday, Pastor Paul. Lord, and thank God, thank God, thank God for the impact of ministry. You see these people come out here and thank God from a place where they are provoked to kneel. It's not our culture, it's not our custom, but when you've been through what they've been through, you'll understand their thanksgiving. Go on and bless God for what he has done. Next, let's welcome another testimony from 
one of the faces you may be accustomed to seeing here at the House Royal. Please put your hands together for Daniel. Happy birthday, Pastor Paul. Thank you, Pastor Ifani. I know uh, I'm very grateful for this opportunity today. I've been looking for this opportunity, but thank God, people keep saying, when my path crossed with Pastor Paul, I've been in Arsenal Road for 20 years, but my path has never crossed with Pastor Paul. <laughs> but I said today, my path will cross with my papa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I've walked around him for 20 years, but I've never crossed paths with him. <laughs> yes, um, my testimony goes like this. Um, when you hear Jesus boys, area boys, this is the testimony. Do I look like Jesus, boy? I'm now a man of God. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, 20 years ago, uh, before 20 years ago, I used to work with um, uh, Senator Lea Imoke in this house at uh, Anifoche. I used to be a security man there. Then Pastor Paul used to, you know, he used to come there and pray, and Pastor Leslie would come in and say, then I was a Muslim. Yes, I used to be a Muslim. And Pastor Leslie would come and talk to me, give me a Bible, and when she leaves, I would go and sell the Bible for 100 naira. <laughs> yes, there's a, there's a supermarket across Nobira supermarket. I'll go there and sell the Bible for 100 naira just to get cigarettes and drink. But three years later, the word she preached to me became flesh. Yeah. Then things happened that I find myself uh, in the ghetto, which is the area boy group now. I don't know all I know, but life was shattered. And this day, I was accused by a friend that I stole his money, which I never did. So I made up my mind. Like, what is this life? Let me go to this ocean and just end my life. Then. I was staying around Akwese Kuramo Beach, and there's this barbish water. So as I was on my way to commit suicide, there was a crusade before the ocean, which was organized by House on the Rock. Oh. And the coordinator of that um, event that it was, uh, late Pastor Akbert, may so rest in peace. And as I was walking, and he said, no, some of you here, you decided to commit suicide because of what you are going through. Don't do that, Jesus love you. That was the first message I heard. Jesus love you. I said, who is this Jesus? So I was looking for the Jesus. Of so something caught me and I stood still. And he prayed from that moment, I have a change of mind. The spirit of suicide disappeared. <laughs> so and I, we were asked to come to the field. Where is um, this landmark uh, event center now? It used to be a field. So they convey us to uh, the church. Then we, I confessed, gave my life to Christ under the uh, leadership of uh, Pastor Carl, oh? Pastor Carl. Yes, Pastor Carl, then Pastor 
Thank you for the, the, the good leaders, the good leaders that we serve under the Pastor Felix, Pastor Yomi, Pastor Idou, Pastor Zino, Pastor Peace. Like as I said, I've never, my path has never crossed with you. But my path crossed with those men that live example with you. So I'm very grateful today, the same area boy became Jesus boy. Then from that Jesus boy, this same man, look at me. Who is me? They made me a zona assistant pastor in that same area boy zone. So area boy became Jesus boy, now become a man of God that visits the area boys to bring them to Jesus. Few years later, I was looking for a job, and one day, I got a call. I walked into Aston Rock Church office. And when I appear, who is this person? They say, it's Daniel. Give him the job. Without no interview. And I've worked with you under you for 15 years now. From, from zero to hero. Adria boy. But today, I'm senior executive assistant under you in this house in the world. I just want to say thank you, thank you. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. That. For those of you who are curious about For those of you that are curious about Daniel, he has completed his Bible school, is now a pastor, and has a powerful ministry, as he has explained. If there are members of the fourth service here, make some noise. All the members of the fourth service, stand up, stand up wherever you are. I see you waving your hands. Hallelujah. We'll take one more testimony. We have a few more, but we'll take one more for the sake of time. Um, please make welcome Rear Admiral Bolaji Oredero. The fourth service is the Auburn Alternative Service. Every Sunday, we meet at the TBS, where we feed over 500 people every Sunday. For the past 25 years. So, the one next door is learning from the Urban Alternative Service. Over 650 people and the number keeps growing. Good afternoon, church. Pastor Paul. Praise the Lord. Um, when the testimonies started, I was sitting right there with my wife, and I was like, ah, God, I wish I would just have a chance to say a few things. Because the story of my life, my family, my children, is not complete without Pastor Paul. Praise the Lord. Um, talking about crossing of paths, right? The last speaker said his own path did not cross. <laughs> Pastor Paul came to preach, I think, about 27 years ago. 
I was serving in the ministry, and um, in that church, we would wear native and wear slippers to usher. And I wore my native Iro and Buba and my slippers, and I was ushering. And then we had a guest speaker, Pastor Paul. I saw his suit, the starched shirt, the shiny shoes. Ah, ah. Which guy pastor be this? And then when he started to speak, ah, say, see, grandma. <laughs> we did protocol and ushering and all that for him, and of course, we followed him. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was how we started to follow Pastor Paul. And, and we were just, I was at the lowest rank of the officer skater at that time. We were sub in the Nigerian Navy. And we started, and the journey became more and more interesting. Pastor Paul made so much impact in our lives. When it was time for me to get married, I went to him. You know, then uh, late Dr. Akimba, me and his wife, they counseled us and everything. And Pastor Paul was so interested. He said he wanted the first uh, military wedding, you know, in House on the Rock. Somehow it didn't happen. But Pastor Paul came. He came for that wedding, and I insisted. I said, Pastor Paul must be the one to bless us. And he prayed for us and blessed us. And we had all our children in House on the Rock. Of a particular, um, something that really happened that really, you know, touched me so much. In 2006, and that was our last uh, child, which means the wonders of God will never end. In 2006, my wife was pregnant, and we were expecting this baby. And, you know, she was just barely six months. She was five months plus. And then one evening, she was just sitting there, and then she, the next thing was, sweetheart, my water broke. I said, your water? Which one is water again? Because the first two children, I wasn't there when she had them. So she said her water broke. I took her to Lagoon Hospital. And by the following day, they said they had to take out the baby. And we're not sure whether that child was going to survive or not. So we started to pray. I came to church. I met Pastor Goki. I told Pastor Goki, he said, have you told Baba? I said, not yet. He said, okay, after service, just come. So after service, Pastor Paul was on the stage, and Pastor Goki just brought me close to him. He said, I should tell him. So I told Pastor Paul everything. He said, where is the baby? I said, he's in the incubator. Pastor Paul just held my hands and he prayed a simple prayer. He said, Father God, everything that child needs, let it be supernaturally supplied in that incubator and let that child live. Hallelujah. That baby spent two months in the incubator. We were not sure whether he was going to make it or not. But we kept on praying. We believed God. And today, is a vibrant 16-year-old. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's schooling abroad. And in his school, it's a secondary school, a missionary school in France. We told them that, can you give us something like a scholarship and all that? They said, no, they don't do scholarship. It's purely school fees. But just a few days ago, the school wrote us a letter that because of his exceptional performance, they want him to be teaching other children when he's free, and that they are ready to be paying him. It will be a form of scholarship. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. That boy is, I mean, you just need to meet him. He's an awesome child, a sweet child, very loving, very passionate. And I can just imagine if we didn't have that child in our lives. Hallelujah. That is just one out of several other testimonies. For every rank that we had to cross, Pastor Paul was there for us. Not only me. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of my other colleagues, I don't know if he's still here, Red Admiral Matthew. Okay, maybe he's gone. There are so many of us in the armed forces that uh, Pastor Paul has mentored over the years. And when he knows the promotion season, Pastor Paul will be the one to call. Hallelujah. A pastor that pastors thousands of people across the world. Pastor Paul will call me, BJ, how are we doing? Have they set up the board? 
How is it going? What are the chances? Is there any problem? It will be the one interrogating, getting all the facts, and then it will start praying. It will call from time to time. BG, let's pray. You are going to get it this year. Don't worry. You are going to get it. And for each rank, the promotions were coming. Hallelujah. And the last one, um, or let me say, the, the last one I had, yes, to Rear Admiral, I missed it in 2020. I was so depressed. I called him and said, don't worry. Next year, you are going to get it. And 2021, Pastor Paul was there. We were praying together, praying together, praying together, and at the end, the promotion came. Yeah. Hallelujah. Subleftenants, I mean, as very young officers, I was telling my wife today as we were coming, I said, sweetheart, the way Pastor Paul treated us as young officers is still the same way he treats us today. He never discriminated. He never looked down on us. He never said, these uh, young, young people. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's always been like that. Full of passion, full of love, full of compassion. So caring, so loving. Not just a pastor, a father. If any time, I've, I mean, I'm just giving an abridged testimony. There have been several, you know, crises. Crisis is part of life. Hallelujah. So once in a while they come in. Pastor Paul, Pastor Efai, they are always there for us. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul, we celebrate you. And we thank God for your life. You are not just a pastor. You taught us excellence. You taught us to dress well. From that first day in my Buba and Chukutu and my slippers that I saw you, everything about my dress sense changed. In my uniform, I'm smart. In my mufti, I'm smart. If I'm wearing suit, it's smart. Because you taught us all these things. You taught us about protocol. You taught us about relating with people, how to handle people, how to plan things, how to do excellence. You taught us prayer, Pastor Paul. You taught us to pray. You taught us to depend on the word. And I must say this, God has blessed me and my family. Sweetheart, please stand up. I want to. <laughs> she, doesn't like, she doesn't like this at all. <laughs> God has blessed us. <laughs> my wife looks like a 30-year-old, you know. All my Navy salary, I mean. <laughs> now <it> be that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sir, from our low estate, God has been good. And I know that I speak the minds of so many people in this house. When we were parking at the car lot, the driver that brought us, he said, oh God, and they say Jeep for this church. <laughs> say Jeep everywhere. I told him, I said, Samson, you see all these Jeeps you are seeing? They were nobodies many years ago. I said, we were all there. And God used Pastor Paul to mentor us, to teach us. He prayed us into our destinies. Today, there are CEOs of all kinds. People are running mega things, mega businesses, big stuff in this church. And we owe it to God and we owe it to you, sir. Pastor Efani, thank you. If the home front was not there, solid, comfortable, if he didn't have a peaceful place to come from, we wouldn't get all that we get here. So, Pastor, that's why we came all the way from Abuja to honor you, sir, to say thank you to say happy birthday. And we pray for you, Pastor Paul. Your head will never lack oil. Your feet will constantly be washed in butter. Your voice will continue to be heard in our generation. You have been a blessing. You will continue to be a blessing. And it will be a transgenerational blessing. Your children will take it to the next level in the name of Jesus. We celebrate you, sir. We appreciate you. And we thank God for your life. Happy birthday. We'll be here again for 70. For 80, for 90, for 100. In Jesus' name. Happy birthday, my papa. Go on and celebrate. Is there anyone here from out of town? Make some noise. I met a few people in the reception who traveled in for this occasion, Pastor Paul, to honor you today. So uh, let's give Pastor Paul a big God bless you for his dedication over the years. 
It's easy to quit in a country like Nigeria to go on and do something else, to weather the storms and continue to be here to do it so excellently through the years. That is worth honoring. One more time, give Pastor Paul a big, big God bless you. It's time for some music. Let's make welcome one of Pastor Paul's sons who has flourished under the ministry of the gospel here at House on the Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, some call him chorus leader. Please make welcome Timmy Dacolo. Thank you for all that I am For giving me courage to stand When I am weak you held my hands To tell me that I really can I thank you for all that you are I wouldn't have made it this far So I want to take time to say That I really love you I want to say happy birthday to you, sir. In Portacot, I was just daying on my day. Daying on my day. Somebody invited me to the church, and I went, and Pastor Paul was preaching. I will never forget that message. He says, Benjamin, the son of my right hand. Came time, and I said, ah. So church used to be like this. No struggle, nobody's forcing us that repent or die. Then we had, I think it's 130 on NTA2 Channel 5. We used to have this. Something is about to happen. And then I joined. Pastor Christopher is here now. Finding the rock. Spiritual authority. Visa Karina. We don't come. We don't come. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be a son. Many more years. Many more awesome years. Many more amazing years. We used, to be, we used to be afraid of Pastor Polo. Pastor Polo show up in the room like this. We were quiet. Have, have you, had Pastor Polo walked into a room and you're there? I used to say, I want this kind of spirit. I would just walk in. Like, everybody would just arrange themselves. <laughs> if you want to do anyhow, you just think, Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul. You just say, Pastor Paul is calling you. <laughs> Pastor Paul is calling you. To God be the glory. <laughs> You've taught us excellence. I don't the cack. Hmm, I don't the cack. We don't dress well. You cannot come to this church and be doing anyhow now. You can't dress anyhow. Because our papa no the like today bread. Always fresh. We love you. There's no other way to say it. We love you for disciplining us, for the spirit of excellence. We can't even release any how kind of music because when our papa hear, call me that boy. This is for you, sir. you Lord for your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will see all the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good We 
every breath that I am able and I will see of the goodness see all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in my darkest night. You are close like no one. Oh, I love. I've known you like a father.
See, when I am weak, you held my hands to tell me that I really can. I thank you for all that you are. I wouldn't have made it this far. So I want to take time to say that I really love you. <laughs> See, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow what your throne in worship. You would be exalted, oh Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. The shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I would say I have made one choice. I would listen to your voice. Wherever you may lead me. And I will go to be in the quiet pastures or by the gentle stream. Shepherd of my soul, you are my God. Say, do I face the mighty mountains in the valley dark and deep? The shepherd of my soul, you are my God. A in your fancy, a man, I am. Yeah, a man. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thine hands I see the stars and I hear the roaring of thy patrol Then seek my soul and my Savior God to thee. And how great I will Just 
ministry in our lives come on those of you who know the story of house on the rock will recognize the set of songs timmy was singing just now they represent a time when uh, integrity music was big in nigeria and that was the biggest source of new christian music coincidentally it was also around the time when Timmy started to sing gospel music. He was telling his story as well as ours. Ladies and gentlemen, let's appreciate God for what he has done, how far he has brought us. Our lives have been transformed because he has taken us in hand and sent us one of the greatest gifts we could ever have. Pastor Paul has preached to us Sunday in, Sunday out, Wednesday, and back in the day, three times on every Sunday. Three times he would sweat out three different outfits every Sunday, preaching stellar words. The third service would have the same quality as the first service. He wouldn't be tired. He would go at it with the same passion, with the same zeal. And today, one of his sons is coming to speak a quick word of blessing over his life. Ladies and gentlemen, from House on the Rock in Minna, please make welcome Pastor Pete Rock Sadiq. Good evening, house. Happy birthday, first of all. Thank you for this great honor. With Jesus' joy, can we celebrate our Father and the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to share something very briefly with us in the next three to two minutes, five minute stops. If you have a Bible, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. Verse number seven. Let's rise for the reading of God's word as it is our custom. If you're there, say amen. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Father, we thank you for your word in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Please be seated. The Bible never told us that the treasures are in golden vessels. The Bible never told us that the treasures are in heavenly vessels. For every time God wants to hide precious things, he will never hide precious things in diamond vessels. When God is going to pick precious things, he will look for jars of clay, breakable vessels, human vessels, and he will hide his gift. And the danger is, when you approach the vessel, you might not necessarily see the treasure. Because a lot of times, the vessel doesn't look like its treasure. So there's a tendency for you to reject the gift of God because you are weighing the treasures of God by the outward appearance of the clay vessel. God's intention is that whenever his excellency of power manifests, it will manifest through us because we are jars of clay. God does not pick gold or diamond vessels. He will pick treasure troves, people that have been abandoned in life, and he will use the rejected stones to become the chief cornerstone. And when we approach the vessel a lot of times, the vessel does not appear to look like God. When God walks into a room, he doesn't walk into a room uh, with wings and angels. When God walks into a room, he walks into a room like an etting vessel. He will walk into a room like an ordinary man. When God walks into your life, he's going to walk into your life like an ordinary man. 
And when God walked into each and every one of us lives, the day we made contact with the servant of God was the day we actually met God in our lives. The Bible says that if you believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. But that's not complete until you learn to believe the earthing vessels. And most of the time, the reason why we do not benefit from the earthen vessel is because we have not recognized the treasure that is inside. The vessel comes, but the vessel's coming is for you to benefit from the treasure. The, the Greek word for treasure there means a chest of different pearls and different apostolic gifts and mantles on the inside. The greatest mistake you will make, you will think that your gift was your gift because you polished it. But the truth is, it is the grace upon the vessel that polished your gift to make your gift your gift. Paul says, you are partakers of my grace. That means the grace you are walking it, you took part of mine to add to yours to become all that you have been. Every one of us in this house, we are all partakers of the grace of our Father. The moment the grace lifts, the gift will change and it will become ordinary. But when his grace is added to us, we become beautiful. Let me tell you some of the treasures in our eating vessel. Is that okay? If you're ready, say loud amen. amen. One of the treasure is our Father in the Lord is a king maker. Somebody say king maker. He has the ability to look for an area boy, even though the area boy has not made a physical contact with him, but just staying under the grace of a kingmaker, he can move from one cater to another in his life, and his life will become beautiful. A lot of us in this house, we were nobodies when we met the eating vessel, but somehow that anointing on him to bring out the royal oil, he squeezes it every time he's preaching the word of God, and all of a sudden, everything that is royal on the inside of us begins to come out. And as our Father will bless us tonight, at the end of this entire service, anyone that has not partaken of that kingmaker's anointing, we decree and declare it will be released upon your life tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number two, he's a trailblazer. We have seen that our father does not walk the path except God has called him to walk it. A lot of things that we see presently in Nigeria, our father and the Lord was the first person that received, just like Paul. He said, in other dispensations, these things were not preached until I, Paul, just like our father is called Apostle Paul. He said, until I, Paul, came. He said, the mystery was revealed to me. Our father is a trail blazer. One of the greatest gifts he has, he's an apostle of apostles. Meaning Pastor Paul does not lead branch pastors, he leads branch apostles. Every son of Pastor Paul is a city taker. If you go to any house on the rock, they are one of the major voices within that city. Not because the pastors are intelligent, but because the apostle has released them. No one in this house will prosper if you're not sent. When the apostle sends you, he sends you as another apostle. He doesn't interfere with the work, but you can feel the grace. The moment you enter a house on the rock church, even though the pastor has not sat one-on-one -on -one with Pastor Paul, you will smell the ministry. The moment you enter into the church, you will sense the spirit of excellence. That's an apostle, leading an apostle. Now, listen, he's not just an apostle of the pulpit. He's also an apostle of the marketplace anointing. Oh, somebody give God praise. That means in this house, in this house, we can see that the glory of God has moved everybody's business from one level of glory to another level of glory. And one of the things that I would, I would love to drop here, even though there are a series of treasures because of my time, is that Pastor Paul is a dynamic intercessor. Dynamic. The first day I heard him pray, I said, so there are prayer vocabularies like this, hidden in the word of God. And when he prays, atmosphere used to shift instantly. You could feel angels ascending, descending at that moment. And they, the, the, the level of language, you know, there are, there are things you go through when he prays, he picks 
picks it up in his prayer. He might not stand and intentionally call your name and prophesy, but every service is, is extremely prophetic when Pastor Paul holds the, 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 the mic. And tonight, we are privileged to have a man in our time, 500 years, we have such a person in our generation. A man that has come to shift the dynamics of ministry, shift the dynamics of, of the expression of Jesus Christ, excellence in ministry, excellence in the delivery of the word of God, excellent. I could not do this in five minutes. Pick up a scripture and share the truth in just five minutes, except a man has taught me how to be diligent in the word of God. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much. How many of us are blessed tonight? How many of us are blessed tonight? We don't, have treasure, we don't have treasures in gold vessels. Every time God is going to bless you, he's going to bless you with an earthen vessel. And God has blessed us with this earthen vessel, and we are greatly privileged. The excellency of it is not of man, but of God. Happy birthday, Pastor Paul. We love you. Our next minister has songs that resonate with the personality of God and also the personality of our pastor. Because truthfully, our pastor is also too faithful. He gets bigger every day in his mind and vision. And many will testify that he is a daddy with a pampa. Ladies and gentlemen, join us and make welcome Minister Moses Bliss. You are who you are yesterday, today and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never fail, you never change. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You're too faithful to fail me. Oh God, you're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize. That you're too faithful. We are here to celebrate the faithfulness of God. Can we lift our hands and thank God for our Father? Say, You're too. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Oh God, you're proven yourself. You've proven yourself in my life And I've come to realize You're too faithful to fail He's ever consistent Can we lift our hands to him? Sing, you are who you are You are who you are Yesterday, today Jesus, oh, you're too 
soul. You know they break my heart. Sing about your mercies. Sing about your grace. My Every night and day, Daddy, where the Papa? Daddy, where the Papa? Forever, forever. Now you they give me rest. stand by me whenever I call you they answer me when people look up on my matter you remember me no be like this I love that in eternity I go there follow you they go go there daddy where the papa again and think about the love of Jesus say your grace cover me your love you shower me anywhere I turn I see your pampering on my left to my right Baba you stand by me whenever I call you they answer me when people look up on my matter you remember me no be lying this I love that in eternity. I go there for now, you know. Can you just give him a shout of praise? Can you just jump? Give him a shout. I want to specially thank Pastor Paul. Thank you so much, sir. Can we celebrate, Pastor? Sir, thank you for your love. Thank you for accepting me. Your life inspires me so much. Every time I look at you, I am inspired. I want my sister to look like this. I'm so inspired. Can we celebrate Pastor again? Thank you so much. 
Thank you. We are going to prophesy over Papa right now that he's going to be getting bigger every day. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you are getting bigger, can you scream? Let's go. Put your hands together. Everybody.
bless minister moses bless he took a lot of time to come out here today and is literally going to fly out this evening but he insisted that he wouldn't miss this opportunity to bless our pastor go on and appreciate minister moses bless and please make welcome a pastor who is covered by the Petra Coalition, a body that Pastor Paul uses to oversee men in, and ladies in ministry. Apostle Christian Phillips, Senior Pastor, Clay Temple Ministries, Lagos. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> this is perhaps one of the most challenging things that I've done in a long while. <laughs> Firstly, I knew I was going to do this, but how I was going to do it, I didn't know. And then they just called me, do it. <laughs> I want to thank God for my father. Initially, I have a problem when they call Pastor Paul, Pastor Paul, Pastor Paul. I know that's the, I know that's the corporate reality of the house. But somehow, that Pastor Paul, it doesn't sound well. But I'm glad we're not calling him Papa, amen? <laughs> Let's put our hands and give God a clap of praise. <laughs> All right, I used to be an usher in a denomination a long time ago, and then I was ushering on a Wednesday. I'd been on a long fast. And Pastor Paul walks into church that Wednesday evening. I was an altar usher. Somehow, I felt so inspired. So I picked up my diary. And I said to him in the diary, I walked to where he was sitting. Then he was coming to look for... All right. <laughs> so I walked up to him and I said, sir, I feel that something is churning in my spirit. I'm, I'm feeling what I can't express. Could you please just drop a word on my diary? And then he looked at me. I dropped the, di I dropped the diary under the chair where he was sitting. And I ran back to my altar position to be... And then after the service, I came back, picked up the diary. He had scribbled something on that diary. It didn't seem to make sense until a year later when I was to marry. Incidentally, I married one of his best daughters in this church. So the day she was going to take me to meet her father, I was praying and then the Lord said to me, take up that diary that he wrote. So I took the diary, we went to Ikeja. As soon as Pastor Paul saw me, he said, hey, you are the usher that I wrote this and I wrote that. That's how the relationship between me and Pastor Paul started. And I look back all my life, there has never been one crisis that I went through and I've gone through several of them. That even up till now, there has never been a crisis where God did not use Pastor Paul not just to heal me, but to medicate me. When I think about him, the thing that comes to my mind is a handkerchief in the hand of God. Only heaven will tell how many lives, how many tears have been dried off because God gave us a caring father like him. I just want to say thank you, sir. Now, if all these testimonies ended and there was nobody from outside house on the rock, something would not be real. So I stand as a first fruit of his sons who are not under the cult, who are not directly here. And I just want to say that Pastor Paul is your best friend at all times and many times he's your only friend. He's a friend that will stand by you and fight your battles, but by no means does he condone evil. Pastor Paul, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the things that I could never say here. Pastor Paul will know the worst about you, but believes the best about you. <laughs> Pastor Paul will never ever judge you by how much or what he knows you or what you've been through with him. Even though we were in a denomination, but Almost all of us from that denomination have shifted covering to Pastor Paul. So today I just want to join everybody to say thank you. One day he was in a VGC. My wife had gone to report me. I didn't know, all right? <laughs> I pray you don't marry Pastor Paul's daughter, amen? <laughs> I pray you never marry Pastor Paul's daughter. It's not funny. So 
I thought I was going to visit with him, and then here he jacked me up like this and carried me with one hand and dumped me on the bin bag. <laughs> My wife will say that he's the only pastor on earth I fear. He's the only pastor on earth I fear. He's the only person that tells me, sit down, no questions asked. Pastor Paul, I want to stand today on behalf of your sons who are not necessarily in House on the Rock. When we started church, Pastor Paul paid my first church rent. My first church rent. We got married. We waited for children to come. They didn't come until the fifth year. And after the pregnancy, my wife had a miscarriage. Just like Pastor said, it was talk about dark days. And Pastor Paul just called us and said something, get away from this place. And then he instructed his office, get us a ticket, take us out of this country, just so that we can get yourself. You know, sometimes we look at him and we see a polished man, very gifted man, but you haven't met the kinder man in your life. So, sir, thank you. For all the churches you have supported when you didn't have to support them. You know, um, growth has denied me of something I used to enjoy with Pastor Paul. Every Monday, I got with him. There's no restaurant in Lagos, I don't know. <laughs> There's not one restaurant in Lagos, I don't know, because of Pastor Paul. And then one of the days we were there, my phone was always ringing. My phone was, and then I looked back. I never saw him with a phone. And then Pastor Paul looked back and said to me, Christian, you don't respect yourself. I said, well, he said, he said, so you can't come out and eat without people calling you on the phone? Keep your phone away. Amen. That's the kind of father we have. That's um, words, and words are not enough to tell us about the gift of God that we have in our midst. The other day, David said, your gentleness has made me great. Pastor Paul, thank you. Till today, where's Timmy? You said, if Pastor Paul says, I want to see you, And so please, could I just ask for a little favor? Please, can we just all stand up? Let's stretch two hands, not just one hand, just stretch two hands. When, you're, when you want to say something to somebody who is an authority over you, stretch your two hands. Toward Pastor Paul, please, everybody just, if there was one desire you have, one desire you have over Pastor Paul, we pray that God will keep him in health. In the name of Jesus. Of the increase of God in his life, there shall be no end. From strength to strength. From glory to glory. <clears throat> so as well, our hands are stretched up in 20 seconds. Please, I'd just like you to utter a word of prayer. Two hands are stretched out. Let's utter words of prayer. For all the lives Pastor Paul has touched, and there are several of us, people that nobody would have known if Pastor Paul didn't give us some covering, some platform. The other day, David went to fight in his old age. They said, let not the light of Israel go out. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we have declared. Pastor Paul, I bow my knees today. I just want to say, sir, thank you. My marriage will longer have been over, yes, if it wasn't Pastor Paul. I couldn't tell you if, up to recently how he'd called me out, locked me, because I grew up without a father figure. I grew up with nobody to talk to me. I've been a pastor from university days, but I never had a personal pastor. He's the only one that can call me and say, you don't do this to a woman. You don't do treat your wife like that. And I'm stubborn, but he's more, he's kinder. <laughs> For all the sons that God has blessed you with, that we've never had enough time to say thank you. For the kind things you do. For how you've stood. For how you've not treated us the way we deserve. Sometimes I look at you, sir, the benchmark is un it's unmatchable. You know, this is a leader you've never had one scandal about. Not one scandal. And, 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 I tell, and I tell people, 
if anybody should have been a scandal, him the more. If anybody is fine, he's fine. If anybody has a background, he got a background. If anybody has the effect, he got the effect. But somehow he has praised God. He has praised God more than anything else. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Recently, we were going through something. Pastor Paul kept us in this office for seven hours. All the office doors shut. Seven hours. And I came out. David said, what is man that that are mindful of him? And I know you don't do this to me alone. I just want to say thank you. You're a father like no other. May God keep keeping you for us, sir. May God keep keeping you for us. So wherever you are, let's put our hands above our head and give God a clap of praise. Happy birthday, Pastor Paul. With thank you. Go on and appreciate him. Go on, appreciate God. Come on, appreciate God for what he has done in our lives and the lives of many, some of which you're hearing for the first time. We thank you, Apostle Christian Phillips, for your testimony. Next, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome another son in the house, comedian Larry J. Praise the Lord. Is my daddy that is doing baby so answer hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, um, um, the man of God that came to speak now, he said he married Pastor Paul's daughter. That's why Pastor Paul carried the part that caught me, the Pastor Paul carried him with one hand. <laughs> Sir, I believe him. <laughs> I believe him. Because you are celebrating 60th and you are looking fit like this, sir. I fit in. I, I, I cannot. Even now, sir, I don't know how to say that you are celebrating birthday. I cannot eat at your birthday because my wife say I should fast. So, and it's not, you know what's painful the most? Because some of the things you are fasting for are something that we are not supposed to fast for. Do you understand? My wife was like, babe, we have to go on a fast. I said, why? I said, same. Well, our son is not eating. <laughs> are we not supposed to be doing Thanksgiving? Because when he's eating, he's a, he's a child of God, consuming fire. He's eating everything, everything and anything. And now he's not eating. Instead of us to be rejoicing, my wife said, you know, no. And remember those days when a child is not eating. You don't need to go to hospital now. You don't need to pray. One grandma will come. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not, and I feel like the reason why some of the children are not eating nowadays is because of the food we are giving them. Serilac, SMA, gold, all those things. No, those days, remember what you ate. One thing in three different flavors. Pap. <laughs> it's either the brown one, the yellow one, and the white one. Some of us, we drank the brown one to the and it started tasting like chocolate in our mouth. Sometimes I'll be proud amongst my friends, I'll be telling them, uh-uh, which color of pap do you drink? They'll say yellow, I'll say you are poor. <laughs> we are, my mother makes brown and white. Do you know what that means? Like, that, some of us, see, if a child is not eating, my grandmother will tie her on her chest. When she's coming, ladies and gentlemen, I knew something bad is about to happen to one child. And it's the child that is not eating. The child that is not eating, you see, think, Wah. Wah. you don't know what's about to be for you. My grandmother will just say something like, eh, as she's sitting down, he said, bring out water. She will wash her hand. Where is the pap? 25 liters of pap. You decide that you are noisy, you are sitting, nah, nah. she will spread her leg, do the rapper, like, hey, why? When the rapper go down, just know that your problem has gone down. My grandmother will not speak one English, she will say, bring it. When she say, bring it, the it is not the pap, it's the child that is not eating. Bring it, the boy is sitting, nah, nah. she will block the leg, block the hand, block the nose. You hear, oh yeah, raw. Ladies and gentlemen, 25 liters of pap is going up. Wham, 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 wham. By the time they release the child, it will look like a shock of patients. The stomach will be in front, the body will be at the back. They will be saying, ah, Junior, what happened to you? He said, I drink pap. See, it's not, see, that's why I'm not, this. God, God will help us, so. God will help us. Because, it, Pastor, see, I went to UK recently. Thank God our pastor from UK is here. See, in that place, if you are trying to relocate, don't bother yourself. Just stay here. This Nigeria that's spoiled, we will repair it. It's better than that place. 
You know the code that is, see, in case you want to relocate to UK, just be staying beside the AC in the church. Practice made perfect. Do you understand? Because I've been sitting down there, the code that I've cast me, I'm like, she cannot die. They let me be there. You know, let's, let's be frank with that. Oh, I've, I've, asked, I've had good goosebumps now, like five times, only staying here. So, how is Satan enter? No, now, she, God will not catch him and go outside. No, let, no, ask yourself, if you are evil spirits, can you stay here? You cannot stay because the code that we catch, what you told me, let me, let me go outside, let me go outside. You, we cannot stay. I went there, do you know, for the first time in my life, I saw a father and a daughter negotiating who to wash plate. It was amazing. But my uncle was like, ah, Larry, you're welcome. Have a seat. Do you like a cup of water? I said, yes. He went to the kitchen, he went to bring water. As he was coming back, he now called his daughter. He was like, Titi, that's Titi. Titi, Titi was like, yes, daddy. I need you to do the dishes. When he said that, I was expecting Titi to just come down there. Titi was like, dad, I'm doing a TikTok video. When I'm done, I will do the dishes. Ah, it been me. When, 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 when she said that thing, in my mind, all I heard was, finish it. Like, I was just like, somebody's hand will fly, blood shed everywhere. Do you understand? My uncle is a Nigerian, so I was expecting, the, to my greatest surprise, my uncle now answered his daughter. He was like, don't worry, Titi, I will do it myself. Ah! When he said it, you know the part that paid me the most? Me, I went to greet them. He was not washing plates. He was not using side eye to look at me. He was, so I didn't know when I said, uncle, don't worry, leave it, I'll wash it. So I'm the one that now went to wash the plate that not concern my family member. You know, and it's not that it did not switch me. It's because the, they used to eat a band, they did not put water inside. So they didn't have steam. So, and in my house, that kind of thing cannot happen. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother will not say, Larry, go and do the dishes. Uh -uh. You want to hear is, Larry, I'll say, Ma, I am going out. There are plates in the kitchen. Before I come back, don't wash it. You know, when you don't wash it, you know they did not burn you well. You will enter that kitchen. Even when I forget, my father will be the one say, Larry, love, I burn you. Your mother will soon come. I don't want to hear noise. So come and go and wash plates now. Or else I'll go and wash it by myself. You cannot let your father be washing plates. So, you know, you, we, 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 are, we are together. It's not. Should I talk? No, because my daddy, see. Larry, calm down. Larry, calm down. Larry, calm down. Hey, Pastor Paul, we have solved her. We have solved her. I'm, I'm not. I'm not, not like I'm not proud of myself. I'm proud of myself for what I've become of me now. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Paul has blessed my life indirectly through the people he has blessed, through other pastors, from Pastor Goke to lots of pastors here. Um, at, the, at the downest time, down, down, now, downest, have you? At the downest time of my life, as a poor, you were there. You were there. You didn't even, you didn't, you were not, you were not there purposefully. <laughs> you, you are not mommally there, eh, mama Simbe. You are, you are not mommally there, but <laughs> God knows best. God used you to use me, to you. I'm not, I, my, my wife is telling me, let me meet Pastor Paul. And after what this pastor has said, that. His wife know you, uh, you use one hand to carry him. Pastor, my wife will never meet you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Go on and give him a big God bless you. Let Larry J know you appreciate him. As well as let him Pastor Paul know that he is a phenomenal pastor. Many people have spoken tonight. Many sons, many daughters, but most of them sons and daughters in a ministry who get to see the shades of Pastor Paul that we see from the pulpit and from ministry. Last person we will invite to speak tonight gets to see Pastor Paul after the church doors close, gets to experience Pastor Paul in a very personal capacity. Let's make welcome Pastor Paul's first son, biological son, Alvin Ade Farrison. Good afternoon, church. Um, it's good to be back here. 
Um, I remember a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, Dad, we were somewhere over there before all of this was done, and we were fishing. We went fishing for a little bit. I think I remember I caught one fish. And throughout the years, I've just been coming in and out of church, and I've seen everything develop. I've seen it from the experience, the first one, when we drove after um, I'd come back from school to go and set up the chairs, and we'd walk across to Faubalewa Square, trying to measure out how many chairs there were inside one little square. And that was maybe when I was nine years old, 10 years old, something like that. And I come today, and I was sat down there, and I nearly came to tears many times when I heard the impact you had on everybody's life here. And that impact, it's from him. And I, and I want to thank him for you. So throughout the course of the week or a couple years ago, I was thinking of what to say for my dad's 60th. And my mom said, do you want to say something today? And I was a bit hesitant. But after I'd heard everyone come up and give their own testimonies, it would have been unfair for me not to say, say my piece. Some, some of you may have already heard this, um, but there was a question I was asked a couple of weeks ago. And the question was, before you give a TED talk, how many full rehearsals do you think you need to have before you, they let you give it? Anyone have an idea? The answer is somewhere around 200. So it's, it's a lot of it. And I thought to myself, before you get up here, and you can preach comfortably with having a he hefty week, a week before you, hectic week. Then on Saturday, I'm calling you, Dad, as a problem. You call me at 3.30 in the morning before you preach, saying, Alvin, I saw a missed call from you. Is there an emergency? There was no emergency, thankfully. How many hours do you think you need before you can get up here and preach the way he preaches? He told me a lifetime. So you will only get better with time, Dad. Only get better with time. The sort of person my dad is, he's a perfectionist. He's a professional. They say someone who's good at something practices until they get it perfect. Professional practices until they can't get it wrong. You're a professional. <laughs> when you attend a service given by my dad, one must, not, one must not forget to bring with them a dictionary. You must have your Bible, of course. A scroll of Latin derivatives and a book on etymology. Just how it happens to be. So dad, I think some of, some of you may have already heard this, but for, for those of you who haven't, many will come and go. Many will come and go. History is an unforgiving friend. History is an unforgiving friend. Yeah. History will have no space for most people. For most people. But history has a space just for you. Fear's greatest friend is an unrealized potential. Fear's greatest friend is an unrealized potential. Pastor Baumas, there's a quote I thought of that I wrote, and I didn't even know what it meant, really, until you gave your testimony. And it, it pairs well with what I just said. The quote goes, hell is when the current version of yourself meets the version you could have been. 
Hell is when the current version of yourself meets the version you could have been. There was a day I remember I was looking at hell in its face. I was somewhere in, in Shrewsbury on a surveying trip with a bunch of group mates um, for a piece of coursework that we had. And I was doing civil engineering at this point in time. Um, so it was a surveying coursework. And my group was just unsatisfactory, we'll say that. So it was 6 a.m. in the morning, it was, it was raining, it was damp. I felt incorrigible. So I called my dad. Bittersweetly, I knew he was going to tell me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. So as soon as I called him, I knew as soon as I get off this phone call, I have to look hell in its face and say no. And I'm going to leave you with a quote. It's by Yuri Brenfin Brenner. Every child needs at least one adult who is irrationally crazy about them. Every child needs at least one adult who is irrationally crazy about them. I have to. I, I've really seen it develop over the years. And I, I say something to some of my friends and I say, your father is the first line of protection from yourself. I have a great father. Let me better that. We have a great father. So for everything, Dad, from, I was, I was born into this church. So I've, I've seen it grow. I've seen everybody who's come here speak, all the people who have helped us over the years, cultivated the dream that God just happened to use you as a vessel for. And I wanted to thank everyone who has been part of that, part of that dream. It's, um, I haven't been back in four years and walking up and down, people saying, ah, your dad, your dad, your dad, your dad, your dad. I've seen him be so meticulous with his studying. I'd wake up when I used to live in Nigeria to every Thursday morning. And I'd see him, wait, I'd wake up at 6 a.m., I'll go downstairs, I'm seeing he's written, is it T-D-D-T or T-T-D-T? And you should see things to do today. You should see how he handles each day. He's so regimented. His architectural background combined with his love for the armed forces and just being relatively draconian with how he handles things is, is very apparent with the way he lives his life. And he has impacted all of us in some sort of way just to be the best version of ourselves and tell hell no. Oh, I appreciate our man of God. Also bless the future generations that exist in House on the Rock. And now, ladies and gentlemen, God called, he answered, and he stuck with the work and has been consistent. Season in, season out, day in, day out. He has been committed to this cause. He put his hand to the plow, and he has never looked back. Let us welcome our father in the faith, the Metropolitan Senior Pastor of House on the Rock, Paul Ade Pharisee. Oh, I know you can do better than that. I have a lot to say today, but I won't. I'll save it for tomorrow. You may be seated in God's presence for a moment or two. 
brevity is my challenge. It's been Niagara Falls in terms of the outpouring of gratitude, thankfulness, um, stories of impact that I'm wondering who they're talking about. A precious sister who's part of this house, Alero Otobo, wrote a, a missive of such might in its meaning that it scared me that if people thought about me in this way, God might take me home sooner than I would like <laughs> for taking his place in their lives. So I had to write a missive back to her. Oh, she's here. <laughs> um, and that's what I want to leave you with, especially those of you who are in ministry, whether by song or in the pulpit. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6 and 7. Whilst you're finding it, let me say something else. I am really grateful to all of you and for all of you. I know I can be tough in demanding for things to be excellent and now exceptional, but it's in the best interest of the kingdom. And so if you hear me, hear me being compulsive that it must be done like this, because God loves to see order and where he sees order, he sits down. Disorder infuriates him and that's why he quickly changes chaos into order and glory. Listen at this. For God who commanded, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'll explain that in a moment. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. What is he? Paul mean here. This is a guy who died often by the beating of the Roman rod and the Roman cat of nine tails and being stoned to death and in perils at sea and perils of false brethren was unbelieved. All the other apostles were leery of him because of the vastness, depth and impact of his knowledge and wisdom and the sheer um, um, coverage of his ministry and the fact that to him it was given to reveal the mystery of godliness on a level that none of the other apostles had. Plus he was a master of metaphors and letters and had knowledge and spoken over five languages. And of course he'd be intimidating to fishermen like Peter who had great knowledge of God but it was just experiential knowledge. But Paul had both on a level that was out of this world. No wonder God chose him because the Peterine would not be effective in a day where there would be intellectual growth over the next 2,000 years. So he gave Paul, particularly for our generation. I don't refer to Paul of Lagos, but Paul of Tarsus. And Paul tells us what Moses discovered many thousands of years ago. And remember, in creation, there, there was no man there until the sixth day. And Moses had said to God thousands of years after creation, God, show me your glory. I'm tired of being used by you so mightily. I want to see your naked glory. Show me your glory. God said, I can't show you my glory because it would kill you. It's too much for this earthen frame to bear. He said, but I have a, a cut in a cleft of a rock and it's tailor made to you. Hang out in there for a moment, find that spot, and you'll encounter my glory. He said, but I'm going to cover your eyes because your five senses cannot pick this up and you survive it. So I'm going to cover your, your visual sense. And then I will open up your mind when I stand in front of you and proclaim the name of the covenant-keeping God. And then I will show you all my goodness without your eyes seeing it. God covered his eyes, stood in front of him, and transfused him with the very essence and the fullness of the power of his glory, but his rare glory, which would be creation. And then when he had accomplished that, he pulled his hands off his eyes, and Moses saw the back parts of God and started writing. In the beginning, God created the heavens, the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God brooded upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. 
Moses was wrong when he said the earth was void, empty, barren. That was his perception. It was not accurate because the earth was full of glory, full of creation that had not yet been unveiled or commanded to come forth. Paul alludes to that in 2 Corinthians 4, 6. When you come to verse 7, this is what he says. We have, just like the earthen season of creation, this treasure, just like the earth did, in earthen vessels. Please help me and tell one neighbor, you have no idea what is on the inside of you. And tell another, there's much more to you on the inside than meets the eye. And so in verse 6 he says, God who commanded the light to shine in the darkness of creation has commanded the glorious light of the gospel to shine in the reflection of the face of Jesus into our hearts so that we now have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of man. That's why he can choose the worst of us. He chooses clay vessels that one of my sons alluded to a moment ago. And when it is time and the command of light comes through this gospel, that if it's accurately preached, you will believe what you could never believe about what God could do in you, with you, and through you to a generation. So that Jesus being the prototype or the first fruit of that, he shows up in the earth and he's a carpenter's son. He's born into penury, somewhat like poverty on the highest level or the worst level. And he grows up in a manger, the first sign that God was not ashamed to put pristinely pure power in filth, penury, and absolute degradation. So that the excellency of the pig sty or the goat sty would not be the sty, but the glory in it. He hides this treasure in the best hiding places where the enemy would not seek to look. Even after you've had trouble of the worst kind, you're still his best hiding place. Hear me carefully, that's the gospel. And so here's Jesus, we see him as a carpenter and we could easily be deceived into thinking that that's all there is to him. The bastard boy of Mary who slipped this dud to him saying that it's the son of God. Only you, Mary. Not knowing that in Mendel's law, which says an individual is the composite characteristics of his two immediate past progenitors. So all the characteristics he has come from the combination of the two of them, either recessive or dominant. Simply put, in the mathematics of that, if your father is a man and your mother is human, you are man. If your mother is God and your father is God, you are God. This poses a problem for redemption and all its benefits because man, fallen in his state, could not span the canyons of everlasting separation between God and man because he is fallen and could not redeem himself. And likewise, God could not span that dimension so wide because in order to redeem anything, you must be relative in order to be redemptive. So how would God fix this problem? He chose simply in the philosophy of this reality or this axiom, the only way for me to save my most chosen, precious zenith of all of my creation is to become a man. And so, whether you realize it or not, your two immediate past progenitors are man, that's your mom and your dad, and God, your everlasting father, if you are born again. So we look at Jesus and we dismiss him as merely a carpenter's son, um, until we see that he must have had two types of life in him. Perhaps the greatest revelation of my life. Two types of life. One, the human life, and the other, the creator life. 
And these two lives existed in one human being. And because the creator chooses to be invisible, you can't see him unless he presents himself in something that is visible. So he tired, he was thirsty, he had to poo poo, pee pee, he had to hunger, he had to suffer what we suffer. He was tested in every way as we are, yet without failure. He would walk up mountains to go and pray. That was his humanity because he could literally just appear there if he wanted to. But when he came down from the mountain after nine hours of prayer at least, he walked past the shoreline and then continued walking on water. That was not his human life. That was his creator life. I could tell you a lot more about his creator life. Um, for example, when he hits Mary and uh, Martha's home, their brother has just died. He, he comes with his humanity and he's touched with the feeling of their infirmity to the point of personal pain, to the point that that pain graduates into weeping, that the shortest verse of the Bible says Jesus wept. He was weeping because he felt their pain. Ministry is only effective when your humanity can identify relatively with their pain. Otherwise, it will never trigger your creator life. Then moments later, he almost seems schizophrenic. And he says, show me where your brother was laid. He will rise again. And they show him. And he shouts. Before he shouts, he says in an open prayer, Father, I can think Lazarus out of the grave. But they wouldn't connect his resurrection to me as the one you sent. So I'm going to pray out loud so that they will know when what is about to happen happens, that you sent me. That I am you, you are me. And after praying, he then commands Lazarus to come out of the grave. That was not his human life. That was his creator life. And he knew how to depress one and increase the other, or increase the other to, to depress the one. So that you would be relative enough to him every time he increased his humanity, but then you'd be in a position to receive from him the creator's intervention in your life every time he increased his creator life. And almost finally, Lazarus comes out of the grave. We see him alive. It's powerful. It's wonderful. And they didn't even come to see Jesus at the next party. They came to see Lazarus. But listen at this. Hidden wisdom of God is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's a chapter about the hidden wisdom of God. And in talking about the hidden wisdom of God, Paul says to the church, he said, had the princes of this world not known, they would never, sorry, had they known the hidden wisdom of God, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Because whilst they were tearing his physical human life apart at the whipping post and on the cross, they didn't know they were releasing his creator life. And when you want to unpack the gift of God, who is God working in you to enliven your gift set, when you want to unpack it, it always happens by the processes of pain, for you are chosen from the furnace of affliction, which is designed to tear back your humanity, to release and reveal your divinity. But how would God find a way to live in you and me, even though we understand why he could live in Christ, because he I was sinless, but how does he live in you and me? He went to the cross and his human life paid the sacrifice, being a perfect sinless person through relationship with God. And that death was not his death, it was your death. So you could have his life and be redeemable. Number one, so that he could not count your sins against you forever and forever. From before you got here, original sin, ancestral sin, uh, historic sin, personal, present sin, and future sin. He took it all away, all. So he doesn't deal with you based on the law of sin and transgression. He deals with you on the law of love, the law of God, the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from that other law, the law of Moses. Number two, being clean now, it made you habitable by the creator life, the greatest mystery that even when you understand it, you might not believe it. It takes experience and challenges for God to squeeze your humanity to cause your creator life to show up. 
When I learned her roots to me, I had to take a long way to get there. I had to write back to her and say, I think you were writing about Christ, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's a mentality, but he's also a person. He's the mind of God. And everything that you have seen through anyone and everyone here at House on the Rock, including myself, it was not us at work. It was the creator life. It was the creator life. When I look back myself, and you've given me a good chance to look back over the last 30 years of ministry here in Lagos, or the prior three years in the UK, I cannot reconcile the work with my person. There's somebody hidden on the inside who when he wants to heal a woman in a hospital whose husband has just died and she's broken and devastated with the fear of tomorrow, he needs hands, hearts, a compassionate heart to take him into that space so that you can be his hands, his voice, his care, and his compassion. When he needs somebody who will take a vision and call the people together to say, even though we don't have a dime, we will arise and build for the God of heaven, he will prosper us. He needed your hands and my mouth, your faith and my vision, and he brought us together to build what had become a trailblazing facility type for others to emulate and thereby do likewise as a standard. In fact, as a prophetic sign. Because buildings like this, they're a sign that in about 20 years, Nigeria will be governed with great infrastructure. It will be governed by men and women who can be orderly and who are governance oriented by knack and by compliance to law to be able to reorder Nigeria as the kingdom of heaven on earth. It's very possible. So when you drive by all these great domes that are showing up everywhere, it's a sign that the generation that's building them will one day rise to roll and power. The present political system um, that doesn't yield the very best to serve the rest except in small sprinklings, it will be done away with. And God will bring in a new Davidic generation of people should Christ tarry in his coming and they will do great things. And I just wanted to leave you with this note. My greatest joy is I'm watching my sons and daughters, spiritually speaking, and including my biological, move into position the way that Jacob saw his 12 sons in position. A father can never have greater joy because as visionaries, we see far more than our feet and life will walk into. And therefore, succession is always an importance. That's why it grieves my heart when I see bastard sons feigning to be real sons. But my heart is overwhelmed with joy when I see real sons who understand transgenerationalism. And when Jacob went to Egypt and he saw the son he thought he had lost had risen to the highest role in the earth and the most influential person on the planet, he knew that the dream he thought had died when he was told Joseph was dead hadn't died at all. God was just developing it in private. Some of you are developing in private, and at the right time, God will raise you up to rescue Israel. By Israel, I don't refer to the Israel of the flesh. I refer to the Israel of the spirit. And that Israel will redeem Nigeria. She'll bring Nigeria back to where she belongs and raise her beyond our greatest imaginations. And may God give us all long life so that we will see our children and our children's children rise to that role and never kill your leaders. Remember, we are earthen vessels. And he chooses to put his treasure in very earthen vessels for one simple reason, so that you would never count yourself out because you are not less earthen than them if the truth were to be told. Amen? Amen. And the messenger is more of a message than the message he speaks because in the outflow of his life and the, the chronicle of his history or her history, God is telling a story about the power of his cross and the efficacy of the blood of the everlasting covenant. I will have mercy on who I will have mercy. I will show compassion to who I will show compassion. It's not of him that wills nor of him that runs, but of God who shows mercy. 
And he will only show mercy to whom can convey mercy in a way that you will always give others another chance, even if it's the hundredth time. On that note, it is my joy and pleasure to see this day. When I was a young man, a palm reader with four or five of my friends, told me that I wouldn't make 40. I was scared of 40. I said, maybe they meant 50. I, I got past that, but I'm, I'm here at 60. It's not my doing, it's the doing of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I feel like I have the body of a 40-year-old. I really do. Um, thanks to human growth hormone that you push every time you go and do some resistance training. And it's a joy to celebrate it with you. And you've endured us patiently again. But God always saves the best for last. But thank you for the kind gifts, the kind notes, the kind presence, um, the kind missives, uh, the thoughtfulness on your part, the service you all bring. I'm most grateful for it. The kind testimonies, I'm most grateful for that. And I also want to present a great gift to you now. He hails from heaven, and that is absolutely unequivocal. He is so powerful in the word. And he finds a way to bring a beat and a rhythm that has no origin anywhere terrestrial. It's, it's a sound from heaven. His manner is so meaningful. And by the time you've encountered him for a few minutes, you're elevated in your consciousness to perceive the presence of the Almighty God, in whose presence there's the fullness of joy on his right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Not like a shooting star because they come and they go, but like a star that shines brilliantly night and day. Ladies and gentlemen, he comes now. His name is Dunsin Oyeko. Just before we go to afternoon tea, please make him feel very welcome as the Lord's blessing is on him for you. And whilst you're doing that, put your hands together for this wonderful biological son, Alvin Adeboega Adewale Adefarasi. Everybody. You speak from heaven, we call it thunder, you are amazing. You smile from heaven, we call it rainbow. You are amazing You look from heaven We call it sunshine That's amazing <laughs> And you made me In your likeness Super amazing You are amazing, God. Hey, you are amazing, sweet Jesus. You are amazing, God. You amaze me. I say it again. You speak from heaven. We call it thunder. You are amazing. You smile from heaven. We call it rainbow. You are amazing. Jesus, you look from heaven. We call it sunshine. That's amazing. In your likeness, super amazing. Lift your hands, everybody. You are amazing. You are amazing. Say you are amazing. Lift your hands and say you are amazing. You are amazing. My Father, what an ever. One more time, somebody.
we prophesy to pass the ball. No power of hell. <laughs> no scheme of man. Can I have a plan? You from his head. Till he returns. Or cause he will. Hey! Yeah! One more time, lift your voice. No power, no scheme of men. We'll have a block you, you from his hands till he returns. Of course, you are. Ay, ay, ay. your song will be hey, that's what your song will be lift your voice and sing a that's what this song will be that's what your song will be that's what your song will be that's what your song will be that's what his song will be lift your eyes and sing a
Different warriors have different weapons, but every combatant has a personal combat weapon. I'll tell you what, what mine is later, but how do you fight your battles? honor Pastor Paul. So I need everybody here to stand. Someone to do like this. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. Higher. Let the high prices of the Lord be in your mouth. And they do exhort in their hands. Somebody release your price all over this room. Everybody say the fragrance of my worship. Lift it up. Praise up to the Father. Praise is the Christ. The fragrance of my fragrance of my worship. Rose up to the Father. Rose up to the Father. Noise is the Christ. Ay, ay, ay. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, tumblings, that place. Ay, ay. The fragrance of my worship rose up. Are you ready? Let me see you. Everybody say, first is the fragrance. Then it turned to foul. My worship is my word. This is how we went higher. This is how we went higher. So it falls into a spring. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles. So it falls into a spring. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. One more time, it's a force. It was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battles. Lift the fist of victory. This is how I win. You have to declare the smoke of my worship. So this is how I win. The smoke of my worship. I shall say, This is how you win. The smoke of my worship. I shall. One more time, say, This is how you win. Say, The smoke of my worship. Are you ready? Everybody say, Somebody say, Can we take the beat? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! It's the sound of victory. Say Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Say loud the sound. Let the sound rejoice and feel the sound. He has made a way where there was.
lost no way. Hallelujah. Hey. It's the sound of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hey. Ha. Hallelujah. So you let the sound. Sure. Everybody say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say hallelujah. It's the sound of victory. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he let the sound. going to save it for tomorrow but let me preface it by saying this Moses said that the earth was without form and void and that darkness had veiled its depth but why was God brooding on top of the face of the waters because like a mother hen he knew there was something in the shell of the earth. I want to speak a word over what's inside you that you don't know is there. 39, almost 40 years ago, I was groveling the carpet almost every second or third night looking for crack cocaine in the grooves of the loop pile in the carpet. I was teetering between suicide and the next hit of the free base pipe in an adventure that took about three and a half years. Until God spoke and I heard him and he said, you will be my minister. And over the years he kept speaking. He said things like he would speak to millions of people at one time. As, as in all at one time. He said, you will build this, etc., etc., etc. Because there is a plight in man that he can be the treasure trove of hugely phenomenal importances and capacities and yet be unaware of it. Why? Because of the opinions of men, including sometimes parents, sometimes friends, sometimes haters, and just a culture of people around you that don't think outside the box. One of the things God gave Abraham, and he gave it to him according to 1819, that is Genesis 1819, that I have chosen to befriend this man because I know that he knows how to train his children by meaning his children's children after him. And what did Abraham get from God? a big mentality God is big he created the universe and its billions of stars and it's still expanding he doesn't live in the universe the universe lives in him yet look at the the phenomenon of God that as big as he is which is infinitely big he was able to condense himself yet remain omnipresent into something smaller 
than your eyes could ever see in the egg of Mary's womb. The first thing I declare over your life, your mentality is going to be so much bigger than every one of your problems, challenges, present and or future and or past. You will always see God as bigger than your challenger, your challenges and your issues. What I mean to say that there's no issue in your life today that is bigger than your God. I was speaking to somebody most precious to me yesterday and I said, all I need you to do is feast on the creation. And that when the beginning begun, it only begun because the beginner was never begun, but he begun the beginning when it began. That means, my friends, God can begin with absolutely nothing or what looks like nothing. Because every gift you have for tomorrow, he didn't decide to give it to you when you became a good guy or a good girl. He had your gift in his hand from whenever God began and he never began. So he's always had your gift in his hand. And when he brought you to being and you had corporeality, that's when he put the gift in you. And you can be alive today and not even know you have that gift. And the first aspect of the gift is God himself. And then your gift set, your biology, your mentality, especially the one acquired from heaven, your knack, your DNA knack, your, your RNA knack, he's the operator. Only a pilot can fly an Airbus 380. Only God can handle you correctly. I declare over your life, that whilst you may presently understand the presence of the creator life as one of the two lives you have in you, may it be more than an understanding, but an ever present consciousness, an ever awake awareness that you are not in this life by yourself, but that the might of creation himself, he lives in you and therefore, like Paul said, Nothing is impossible to you. You can do all things through the creator life that strengthens you. He was in the beginning with God. He was God. There was not anything that was made that was not made by the creator life. Third thing I want to declare together with you. Light will pervade your space. Till all the darkness that covers the hiding place of the creator life and all its composite skill sets and treasure sets inside of you, that light will banish the darkness. Yeah. It will shine so brilliantly every time you open the book, the light will reveal the treasure trove in you. That's why on the count of three, and I will do this three times, I will ask you to shout, let there be light in my life with everything within you that's trying to come out. Do you know that some of you will be the largest leaders that the planet has ever seen? That out of this darkness called Nigeria, you will emerge to the shock of Moses when things started coming out of the earth as God spoke for six days. On the count of three, I want you to shout, let there be light in my life. Your loudest shout ever. One, two, three. One, two, three. Father, before they declare it for the third time, I summon all of creation's host from the heavenly realm. I summon all of your entire purpose for each life here. 
that which is settled in heaven and written on the tables therewith and I declare concerning that handwriting that no wisdom table from darkness will ever be able to overturn that which you have predetermined from before the foundation of times and therefore I boldly declare that the hidden treasure in these earthen vessels will very soon come to their day of dawning and therefore in the name of Jesus Christ I declare let there be divine light in every life that is present online and not present but a part of this family or identifies with this family in the name that is above every name which rules in the heavens on earth and underneath the earth we declare it is so and there's nothing that the enemy will be able to do about it and what I want you to expect is this that in the unfolding of days as you seek fellowship with at least one or two others who know how to gather in his name not the name of a man his presence will unfold the writ of scripture till it is revelation knowledge from God to you personally that your consciousness that I'm not alone I may be wearing rags I may be going through the worst hell I might have the worst kind of trouble right now but the creator the creator life is in me it's part of me I'm part of it and therefore there isn't anything that can come to me that I cannot handle and that also is a suggestion that there are going to come challenges and the challenges are not coming to demote you deprecate you diminish you reduce you they come to reveal Christ the creator in your life so that when people see you show up they will soon understand that it's never just Tunji or Christian or Mrs. Isa or May but there's some invisible God the owner of it all who is hidden and he's not he's not insecure he's happy for you to get the glory but a wise man will always return the glory back to him and that is the trust that he will do mighty things in you and through you but the trust is simply this that when he does it through you give him the glory tell them who you are and I leave you with this last moment in covenant Alvin come God the promise keeper he made friends with Abraham and Abraham made friends with God. This God, our creator, he was Abraham's best friend. This Abraham, God, was his best friend. That's why God said, he's my friend. When the Almighty makes that commitment in your life, it is a trust. Because he intends that through your being, he will have expression in an earth where he is not licensed to come except through humanity. He wants you to be his heart, his hands, his mind to a generation that needs God desperately. And then Melchizedek and him broke bread and they drank wine. And Abraham forever had that consciousness that God is my best friend. And he began to understand the scale of God. Your, your enemy is too small for your God. When you face a problem, remember this. Stir up the gift that is God in you. For God, Paul said, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love. That means his love towards you is not based on your performance. It's based on his commitment. Jack Hayford said it this way. He said, God is not as concerned with your perfection as he is with your direction. In other words, once God can head you in the right direction, perfection is not the issue because he already put Christ on the cross and bled him to death so that he would only see you through the prism of the blood. That means he would never see your sin ever again. God cannot see your sin. It's not in the reckoning. 
What he does is he loves you so perfectly till you fall responsively in love with God. And there you will find God to be a trusted friend who is so unconditionally committed to you and has enough power, if he could create the heavens and the earth, to change you, to bend you, even when you are unbendable, and to break you if necessary. But he will always keep you close and loving in his hands. Our love is made perfect. Therefore, we are fearless when anything that resembles judgment, including the last judgment day comes. Because as he is the resurrected Christ, so are we in this world. Get ready. Because if there's anything I want to do with you this year, I want to make sure that you get more than an understanding of the creator life and the scale of the creator, which is past finding out, but that you get a consciousness. You can be a billionaire's, multi-billionaire in dollars son, but if you don't know you are the heir to your father and that money belongs to you, you may never walk in that inheritance. You must become aware that you're not just an earthen shell. The creator life is in you. And when you practice it a little bit like he teaches, and you practice it some more, you become convinced the more and the more and the more and the more till when you wake up in the morning, your humanity is so decreased and the creator life is so increased that you can't take on anything. I asked God the other, I said, why do you give me these kind of battles? He said, they're not your battles. Have you not read it in the scripture? That the battle is not yours, it belongs to me. So you decrease, let me increase in your life. That's what he wants to do. T is waiting. Does he put me in this? I want to pray and pass it on to a gentleman friend of mine. Father, hold my hand. I bow my heart before the mastery of your presence, the majesty of your limitless glory and the immense infinity of your power and person. And though you are past finding out and there's no searching your understanding or surveying the expanse of your power, your might, your majesty, I ask that you will grant us all in the Lagos church, the body of Christ in Lagos, the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of the Son of God who is the creator of the ends of the earth and the universe in all its parts and to all its extremities and maintains the orbits of all the galaxies, the Milky Ways and the planets therewith. That the eyes of our mentality would be opened to know what you were expecting when you called us to Christ our Creator and to know the riches of the glory of the inheritance you buried inside these earthen vessels that Satan covered using the voices of men and their opinions to suggest that what you put there is not there. And finally, Father, that we would all know what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward those who believe which works that power according to your riches and glory in Christ. Father, help our unbelief. Enrich our faith to hear you much more than we just come to church and hear a message, but to hear you in the message. Even so, bless your people, we pray. Please put your hands together and receive <laughs> Pastor Ike as he makes the last announcement and we'll go to tea. Thank you all for being so uh, generous with your time and showing your love for Pastor Paul by waiting till this time. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Just to quickly acknowledge a few guests who have made an extra effort to be here. Please join me and acknowledge a friend of Pastor Paul's who came all the way from Houston, Pastor Kelvin Itodon, um, who made our time to be here. Good to see you, sir. Please put your hands together properly for him. Thank you, sir. Also acknowledge Mrs. Abdul Razak Issa, who is here with us. Please put your hands together for her as well. 
Um, we'd like to also take a moment to quickly acknowledge Pastor Paul calls them his princes, the pastors of the daughter churches of the House on the Rock. If you're here, one of our branch pastors, resident pastors from any other branch, please stand. Uh, we would like to see you and properly acknowledge you. If you're a Petra pastor and you're present, please join them and rise to your feet. Please put your hands together for all our Petra pastors. Thank you. We appreciate the work that you do in your cities. God bless you. Uh, just to quickly announce that service will start at 9 a.m. tomorrow. You want to get here in time. A lot of people are planning to be here, and you don't want to miss out on being able to be up close and personal. So come and come on time. Bring a friend with you and tell them it's a very special service here at House on Rock as we appreciate our senior pastor. Um, just a quick announcement. If your name is Onyechi Onyema, Onyechi Onyema, you've lost a very precious document that we've found for you. Uh, just ask for Pastor Akachi and we'll make sure you get that. Quick exit protocol. As you are leaving, because of how long you've stayed with us, Pastor Paul's made sure that we know that many of you are going to rush off, so we've put your food into food packs and we have them available for you at the doors to my right and to my left. These doors are not for egress, so if you make your way through those doors on the extreme right and the extreme left, you will find your uh, food packs available to you on your way out. We would love to see you tomorrow. I know there are a few of you that have been asked to wait behind for a quick meeting. Um, please do so as well. Thank you so much. And to close out the service with a, a benediction, he's a friend of Pastor Paul's, served under Pastor Paul when the Pastor Paul was um, pastor of the Action Chapel all the way decades ago. Um, so that's how far back their fraternity, their friendship has gone. And he's here today to celebrate with us. He's going to bring us the benediction. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welsh welcome Bishop Oscar Osang. Praise the Lord. Please, may I have um, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. Numbers chapter 6, my responsibility is to pronounce the benediction. May I therefore request that we stand. I have not cried in a long time. But when I listen to that testimony from Jesus boy, tears were rolling down my eyes. That is legacy. I don't care about the structures, but lives that are turning around Let's clap for this gentleman again. This is great. This is great. I listen to Alvin. My boys have been asking after you. I don't know where they read about you. They are there in New York. I've been asking after you. And I remember what my first son said, Joshua, was for Ensa Young. As a risk expert, Second one is a cybersecurity expert. He said to me, Dad, I'm going to be paying tithes. I said, uh -uh, why? He said, whatever made you able to finish paying my school fees in, in America from Nigeria without any business, I want to follow that thing. <laughs> Praise God. He religiously sends a tithe of his income monthly to me as his pastor. Can you see what God is doing with this gentleman? Following the footstep of his father. I challenge all of us to produce the same result for Jesus. Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Next verse. The Lord makes his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The next verse. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The next one. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. I want to put the name of Jehovah God upon your lives. Your enemies shall become God's enemies. Yeah. I put your name at the name of Jehovah, the creator of the ends of the universe, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mighty God Almighty. 
let his name become a defense to your lives in the name of Jesus. Let's do the protocol of the church as well. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness, mercy, follow you all the days of our lives in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Quick reminder about our egress protocol. Please make your way through the doors on the extreme left, on the extreme right. For those of you who received invitations to that meeting, uh, please wait behind or make your way to the center aisle. Everyone else, please exit to the right and to the left to be able to receive your food packs. And for those of you who received those invitation cards to that meeting, please wait behind or make your way through the center aisle.